Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I hope that you're doing well and you had a great weekend. If you're doing better than I was, I'm This fine. is our first uh, time doing a stream where we two-part one single scenario, which uh, <laughs> Stephen will talk to in a second. But this is our first ever Madness Monday. That's right, yeah. So uh, this is usually a, a Marvel situation, so if you came here looking for Marvel, apologies for that. Uh, we were finishing up the final scenario of the Domage Legacy campaign on Friday. Whenever I fell... Uh, quite immediately ill. So uh, my brother and his wife... You can watch it live. It's the video <laughs> still there. Amazing. That whole, their, their whole family had caught like the, you know, sometimes you get these 24-hour um, stomach, uh, we call it a stomach bug. But long story short... Do other uh, regions have words for that that aren't know. bugs? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's essentially a 24-hour um, religious experience, I guess I would say. And uh, it started right here on the stream, actually right before the stream. Uh, and then I thought everything was cool. And then uh, if you if probably if you watch that footage of me actually trying to work through that last turn, your, your it, energy <laughs> curve was just going straight down. I, I it was not good. I texted Zach when I was in the bathroom. <laughs> I was like, I cannot continue. Yeah, this is the, over. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting here and we took a turn. So where where we were is we had just finished our Thanks, player guys. turn. I appreciate that. And Steven is going to rework some things because he was, was not like, in his right <laughs> space. But I remember I was just, like, focused on my turn. And then, like, all of a sudden, I look up and you're like, I'll be right back. <laughs> and then I could, from that mo from the moment you said, I'll be right back, I saw a look in your eyes. Oh, yeah. Despair. And it was like, <laughs> I was not confident you were going to be right back. And then I got the text messages yeah. uh, that were like, hey, I'm not coming back. Yeah. And then it was, a, a how can I get home in time? And I was able to get home in time, and it was pretty miraculous. Um, but anyway, 24 hours in, pretty much totally fine. And then I'm sure you were tired uh, over the weekend, rested, recovered, and now you're back. Rested, recovered, now I'm back. And we're picking up where we left off, which is right at the end of my turn. And you had already taken a turn, I've taken a turn. Um, and I want to kind of uh, just, you know, use Mr. Rook, something I forgot to do. But I had just ended by discarding the top three and then moving to the Prismatic Cascade and then playing Dr. Christopher. Um, and that was the end of the turn. And so then we'll go to the enemy phase and we'll get right into it. But a little reminder, can you read the act and the scenario for yeah, me? Yeah, I think we should. Uh, and if you are happen to be here because you think it's going to be Marvel and it's not, uh, this is the kind of similar, I don't know what the Rise of Red Skull campaign is going to be like, mm -hmm. but it's a... Uh, Arkham works in like uh, scenarios in one ongoing story, and this is the final scenario. So you're going to be all all out of sorts uh, trying also, to follow this there's one. Also, there's a fly in this room. I swear it's been here since Friday, and it it shows up about once that every makes sense. ten minutes. And it's one of those like slow, uh, like slow like annoying flies where it's just like you feel like you can you can take a crack at it really easily, and then you underestimate it, and then it gets away. And that's been the story of the past like hour and a half of my life. Well, it's not the like annoying flies that stay around all the time. No, it just hits you for a second Everyone's and then it goes away, <laughs> and it's like, where'd you go? Yeah. So uh, if if that if the fly makes an appearance, I, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be out of control in my pursuit of it because uh, it is driving me insane at this point. Well, that's true Arkham style that you'll be going insane on stream. Thank you. Uh, so the agenda one A is all is one. Pathways of sound and color extend for an eternity in all directions, dotted with impossible architecture and overgrown with alien wildlife. Mm. The lines between objects are jagged and shifting, and your skin feels as if it were inside out, which it did. It, it probably did. felt like that. Quite literally. <laughs> Forced after you are moved to a location by an encounter card, take a horror. Okay. So one of these cards moves us, we take a horror, and if we take too much horror, we exit the game. We go insane. Act 1A, out of this world... Somehow, you must find your way across the alien landscape in order to find the nexus that was described in Old Waitley's Tome. So we can take an action at any time, one of our three per turn each, to discard three cards from here. Mm -hmm. Any locations that would be discarded come into play, mm -hmm. uh, and then they read stuff, they do stuff. So if one of those happens to move us to that location, then obviously we take a, a sanity damage from all those one. Uh, and basically, as far as I can tell, we're basically... Last we time we hopped clues. In, into a portal in the last yeah. scenario. Now we're in like the insane land of interdimensional. <clears throat> these locations aren't necessarily just connected. It's this weird. The scenario is called Lost in Time and Space, so uh, it's it's going to get weird. Now the other thing we need to know is that if we've got this big bad Yog Sothoth, the lurker beyond the threshold down here. So if we ever get moved by a force effect uh, 
to another dimension, so this is our like home base, if we ever get moved here by a forced effect, then... Do you want to give me a table shot? Yeah, we're going to end up at Realms Beyond. That would be very helpful, wouldn't it? Yeah, so this is the home base, and this is out in the middle of nowhere, this Realms Beyond. We'll end up at Realms Beyond. In fact, you know, just to make it obvious, we could put it like up here underneath the, it is beyond. the agenda. So it's kind of out of the game. So we move there, and then this big old nasty demon man is sitting there, uh, or demon thing, I don't, I don't uh, you know, hard to say. Uh, and then if we have to do there, we we got to make a test, a three brain or a three foot. I'm not great at, you're, we're both awful at foot, we're okay at brain. Uh, and then we get to move, or if we fail, we don't get to move out of it, which is a problem. So we could be stuck there with this big weird thing, and then whenever our sanity damage comes in, we have to discard cards or take the damage. Yeah. So we're going to be milling ourselves out, and then there's things in the encounter deck, like you already have one, right? That if you mill yourself out, you take 10 damage. Beyond the Veil, one so of the worst cards in all of Arkham. Now we've got to like stack up uh, you know, allies and try to survive. I've got Quantum Flux in my deck, so hopefully I can pull that out and just reshuffle. Well, I have two Charisma, so I could have three allies out. Yeah. Um, and I did get Agency back up, and that's a that's a... Nice. That's a beefy. Beefy stat. That's some prime play. rib right there. So <laughs> I really, what I need to hap not have happen is getting it randomly discarded from the top of my deck. And Savage said, uh, Yogg's Thoughts is the literal physical embodiment of time and space itself, if I recall correctly, lore-wise. So that's fantastic. So we'll pick up right where we left off. The one thing I want to change about the turn that I just took at the end of it, I want to use Mr. Rook. That's it. Mr. Rook. And I'm going to search the top six. Also, I see people, uh, <laughs> Chris says, Funny Zach says that every campaign. This is the worst card in all of Arkham. Uh, the, uh, I see people talking about it in chat. One thing to mention, no, this no, week we're streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, we're not going to be doing Freaky Friday on Friday. We're going to be taking off on Friday. And then next week we're not streaming at all. So first week we haven't streamed in six months. It's wild. Just say it, and That's then it awesome. sounds crazy. Uh, so awesome. we're taking a week off, uh, cooling the jets, recharging a bit, and then we're going to jump back in that next week for people specifically excited to see us play through Rise of Red Skull. That'll give people at home some time to maybe get ahead of us so there's not spoilers. And then we're going to be taking it week by week, which I'm really looking forward to. And then when we come back, we're going to also start a brand new Arkham campaign. Okay, so let's see. My next move, honestly, I know what my next move is. So I just use Mr. Rook. I have to draw this weakness because I, I uh, you do. grabbed it. Now, here's the crazy thing. I can't use Armitage on weaknesses, right? After you draw a card, discard it, exhaust I don't game think three. So. Let's mm -hmm. just assume we can. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Armitage's ability on Mr. Rook here. I think it says search the top and draw it. If one weakness is might draw it as well. So you can handle this. I'm right up next to you. You can come up here and kill this hound. It's a classic tale. Tales all this time, if yeah. you will. So I need to discard a card to do this. I'm going to keep the ally. I like premonition. I like shortcut. So I'm going to draw. Oof. These are all great cards. Isn't that nuts? All good things. I'm gonna, I think Premonition is the weakest card here. So I'm going to draw Premonition, discard it to gain three with Armitage. It's a nice little uh, money move there. That's really pretty sweet, yeah. And then I will Daniel Ferris asking, will the Circle and Dun boards be ready for purchase when you start playing Circle? You can imagine that Man, that would might, be, might be. a scenario that we're trying to create, but yeah. no promises. Thank you, Mr. Rook. All right, so you're exhausted, you're exhausted. Christopher's done nothing. The Hound is engaged with me, so that's unfortunate. My last action, I'll just have to take that SWAT. And then we go to the enemy phase. You that's any right. enemies? I got no enemies. Uh, Yogg can't hunt, can't move, so I take a swing from Vengeful Hound. He's so angry. I'm going to put one and one on Armitage. Everything's going to ready. We're going to draw a card. Gain a resource. Oh, that's all of us. Yeah. And then we'll go up to the top. One Doom on the agenda, and then the bad cards. Hmm. You got weaknesses? Mm -mm. Doom on. <laughs> bad one? Oh, no. It's another Beyond the Veil, but I can only have one. Oh, good. You surged See, it. You didn't get it, yep. Revelation, collapsing reality. Mm. If you're in, at an extra dimensional location, that's nope. me. Discard it. 
and take a damage. Otherwise, take two damage. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hey, at least if you had discarded it, you would have ended up at the realms beyond. Because you would this location would not exist, and you would be forced and yikes, you'd be shot into the other dimension. Not what I want. What up, Warner? Oh, hey, a location. Put it into play and lose two resources. Okay. That's fine. So this is a blue triangle that connects to another dimension. Also connect dim dimensional doorway here. And these also connect. This to here. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Blue to blue. No, we got we don't have bacon. But it doesn't it, have single this bacon. This connects here. Yeah. But this doesn't connect back, right? And this connects here. Nothing else connects to this. Mm -mm. Or it doesn't go anywhere else, does it? No, nope, it doesn't. So it's just kind of yeah, good luck with us. I think it's, it's just the supposed indecipherable to, stairs. I think it's supposed to make us feel very uncomfortable. Uh, this whole thing makes me feel uncomfortable. And then this can't move here, so we could really I guess it's this, huh? Is that right? No, because another dimension can move here. Yeah, so this, these both connect here. This doesn't connect back here. And this doesn't connect here. Hmm. <laughs> so what is that thing? Well, it's like you can go he either of these two. And then in this bridge can go to dimensional doorway. They're connected like that. Yeah. Yes. So we've got. Let's do this. So Are you good really, with this? Yeah, I'm good with that. Because that can drop down to both of these. Yeah. And this does this thing. Yeah. I like that. Hey, that was a good draw for me. Big brain time. All right, I've got a vengeful hound. Can you please help? Help! Thank you, Werner. Yes, I'm doing great. So, I, like, is the place I'm at the place to be? Mm. Let's see how this read. I need four. I need to get. So four it was clues. better to be at an extra dimensional for collapse in reality. Except you would end up at, at realms beyond. This seems like the safest place. Hmm. Because I have a uh, small favor, mm. so I could ace the hound from exactly where I sit for That's four. Nice. Can you get? Did we get a clue off of this somehow? Nobody has any clues, right? So there should be two there. I have. You swatted earlier. I think it, it got crazy. There should here. be two there, and there should be one there. Three here, two here. Okay. Can you get a clue? I mean, that's kind of where we are. This is a two shroud. Even, you know, a child could get a clue off this one. Yeah, but I mean, I have to move twice to get over there. You could, honestly, what about this two shroud? I could leave that one free. I could grab a clue and then move up here and, and drain this guy. How many are we looking for? Four? Four, yeah. So I also have a little thing called evidence. Hmm. Oh, so that's, So I could oh, pop yeah, up, yeah, yes. swat the dog, yeah. get a clue for free. Yeah. And technically, yeah. Andrew Harrison, shout to you. Mail call, investigator Dex just delivered. That's great. Noise. Like I said, those were unfortunately just a little bit, uh, just a little bit later than usual because that weird asthma day uh, delivery got routed via UPS like a million ways. You should have got an email about that. But glad those showed up. Yeah. All right. Um, you may go first. Let's go first. I'm going to move up to Prismatic Cascade. Yeah. Then as my second action, I'm going to use my Enchanted Blade. So I'm plus one for my beat cop. Plus you need to two. engage him? Or you can not engage him and just not fail. Because if you fail, you're going to... Well, if I engage him, I get a free buck, right? Yeah, you're going to rock Norman's world if you uh, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Have at the old man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll engage. Frankly, we will have a pre-order for those boards uh, once we actually have the final materials and final price. Uh, so I'll engage, gain a dollar. Yeah. Then I'll use, I moved, engaged, swing. Yeah. So the blade is plus two, beat cops plus one. That puts me at an eight. Two is two. I'm ahead by six. Too big to fail, right? Too big to <laughs> fail. Uh, let's do it. Yeah, I think you're good. <laughs> What's nice, though, is... If I hit him, I do two. I can use a token to do two, heal a horror, and draw a card. That's gorgeous. It's really good. It's gorgeous. And then I get to reveal the top card immediately of my uh, Also, deck. can you Just imagine? Say, say while he's engaged with you. Yeah. OK, so I can flip <laughs> immediately. Oof. There's Warren. It's a zero. Nice. All right, so we'll use a charge off the uh, three experience enchanted blade. Uh, the Vengeful Hound will go to your discard pile. Because I defeated him, I get to heal a horror and draw a card. Love that oh, yes. Blade. How about that? Smite the Wicked. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until an enemy is discarded. Attach Smite the Wicked to that. 
enemy and spawn at a, the location farthest from you. Is it realms beyond? I don't know. Can you measure a distance to a place you can't get to? <laughs> Dividing by zero? Let's uh, find the enemy first. What happens if I real location? You keep discarding. Like, does it go away? I think that's very bad for us, yes. Or does it... Yeah, I don't think there's any reason it wouldn't go away, no. <laughs> I just want to make sure, because, like, what's making it come into play when normally when we're... Uh, it just has to resolve the text, yeah. But, like, this one is... I think it's in the book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, yeah. All right, just, well, this can be just, there's can, two. Can you imagine just going all the locations? All right, interstellar traveler. Spawn any <laughs> extra dimensional location. So it can't spawn here. That's really good. So the furthest extra dimensional would be... Dimensional doorway. This one. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, honestly. He does have Hunter, though. So he's going to make his way. Ooh. Four attack, three uh, thing. Look when, at him, like, uh, eating a planet. How much... Doesn't... Flip a clue to its doom side. Place on your or place one doom on your cell if there are no clues. Okay, so it's just going to turn clues into doom. Oh, that's very bad. Do you just enter this location, or do you not enter it when you spawn? I don't know if that. I don't know which one. I don't know if there's terms. So this one will remove one clue, turn it into a doom. This one will remove nothing but add a doom. This one yeah. will turn a clue into a doom. So once he, once he, we'll see where we're at. And it can only go to four. He immediately turns into Doom. Mm -hmm. So it's going to advance this round. Yeah. Uh, place it on or place one Doom. Yeah. So it goes on to him now. He's just a clue Hoover. Uh, but if you kill him, all the Doom goes away. Well, I can't get to him now. Yeah. That was, that was a very fun way for oh, yeah. that to go very wrong. And then I'm going to play an evidence when that happens. Discover a clue, huh? Lady Thunder. Okay, so. I wish I could go toss my dynamite in there. There's no reason you would want to take that enchanted blade back if I reverse that entire action. You could opt to not draw that card. Do we have anything that would just discard a card from the top of your deck that we wouldn't have to worry about that weakness? I don't. Hmm. All right, we'll just let it stand. Leave it where it is. I mean, technically, if you did flip, drop, and reverse it. <laughs> I mean, the problem is he's going to, I guess he would come out past the advance phase so I could go deal with him. Because you could flip, drop, and reverse. Instead of me swinging, I could just go down here. Well, you could still swing and kill the hound, just not activate the blade, right? Use the beat cop and do one damage with the blade and mm. not draw the card. <clears throat> and so then that that backs all of that up. But then during the mythos phase at the top of the next turn, you still draw that card. At the at the end of this phase, or at the end of this turn, you draw that. We spawn it there. So what do we really gain? Because it's going to be the same outcome, right? Yeah, I don't think it's that much. It's the same outcome. It's fine. Yeah, you just go get those clues and let's advance this thing. Okay. Well, first, let's see if I can get another weakness. Uh, let's do a fast action here on my buddy, Mr. Rook. Oh, was I supposed to lose? I think I was supposed to lose two resources for something, wasn't I? That came into my head. Yes, here. Is it when you yeah, into play and lose two resources? I totally forgot about that. Okay, I'm not ready for Mr. Warren Rice yet, so I'm going to go another six. Ooh, shiny card. Here with the Ace of Rods, right? All right, so I can get one of these. Ooh, Warder Protection's good. All right, it's hard to pass up Quantum Flux, but I just don't need it yet. Um, another Mr. Rook is not necessary. Emergency Cash is nice just for the money. Literally just low on money. But I could also just turn it immediately into cash with Armitage, so. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I could burn that Ace of Rods to just get the cash. But look how pretty it is. I'm going to do that. It'll look good sitting on top of your discard pile. <laughs> I'm going to burn it with this Armitage. Dr. Henry Armitage. Hit three. I've got, the, I've got an ally squad that's really just crushing it right now. <laughs> 
Uh, and then the other thing here is like, so I'm hoping right now, I wanted to reflip because I couldn't play the top card on my deck. So hopefully I get like a fingerprint kit on Anything the Anything that you want to play? That would be sick. Fingerprint kit is really the key. Inley saying, what the, what the card is that? Glowing? Yeah, there's some apparently fan-made foil versions of the uh, just found it in tarot a pack. card. It was the strangest thing. This yeah. Mythos pack had like one of them in it. How cool one. would that be? Yeah. Um, oh my gosh! Fish. No Boo. way! Gotcha. Just right here from downtown. Three pointer from half court. He pointed to the outfield. He um, swings. But it's uh, here. Chris in chat, one of the local players here, uh, gave us those. It was very kind of him to, to get those for us. <clears throat> okay. Keen says clutch. Yeah. That was close. So first action, I'm going to pay three with my minus one discount for the kit. What kit? It's like calling off the backboard when you're playing uh, yeah. you know, horse. This one's <laughs> you're shooting, it's like, <laughs> off the backboard. Did you did you do the behind the backboard shot? Oh, yeah. You seem like a behind the backboard. You got to have the shot. That, you got to have your shot. That That's right. Your opponent just can't match. Not miss your chance to, OK. Especially so, like outdoor goals, you, you have to be able to do that. You have one clue. So that means that if I do... I've don't got, don't clear those clues, though. I've got two actions left. Well, we could advance this turn. Yeah. But you just need one from this location. I'll just grab the one. Okay. So i got two actions left. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Norm work some magic here. <laughs> ben Counter says, it's a three-pointer from the concession stand, by God. <laughs> <laughs> by God, by God. <laughs> All right, so... There's a couple of lines that I could do here, and I, I kind of have wanted to... Might go left? It's the conclusion of the right. campaign, so it's good to... I, somebody said on the YouTube comment they really like when... Or, or Twitter was suggesting new content. Somewhere in my brain. I don't know. It's all social media. Uh, was saying, like, explaining decisions is really helpful. That makes sense. So the things that I'm looking at are... These are the three key cards that I have in my hand. Time Warp, Shortcut, and Working a Hunch. <clears throat> Working a hunch, I could play it right now, pay two, pull a clue off of here. Then I can shortcut up to steps. Then I have two actions remaining still. So then I could fingerprint kit, grab two clues, and then move back to you as my last action. So that's one line. The thing I don't like about that line is that if I have, go to zero money, time warp is no longer playable. So like if I roll up here and miss a big fingerprint kit test, I can't reverse it with time warp. So I'm thinking if I just reverse that order, second action move, third action test with fingerprint kit. If it hits and I don't need time warp, I fast action down with shortcut, fast action working a hunch, and grab that one clue, and then we can advance mm -hmm, all at once. Mm -hmm. So it's a more efficient way to me of making sure that I can hit this time warp if needed, because I don't want to miss a fingerprint kit test. That's very smart. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Spelling now, me champion, eighth now, grade. One thing to think about, big brain time, literally. Yep. Go for it. When you, clear, when you leave this, you have to test brain. Two, two brain. brain. And yeah. if you fail, instead you shuffle this location in, and you're going to bounce over here. That's right. So, so don't fail. That's why you have to have that time warp. That's true. If you take that test and fail, time warp is the savior. You know, time warp's interesting, because it's after an investigator at your location finishes resolving an action during his or her turn. So like when you would leave, you would le finish the move action? But if it's a fast action... Is it an? It's an action, right? It says action, and it's right there on the box. An action during his or her turn. Yeah, it's, it says it right here in the lobby. <laughs> it's right there. It's on the guarantee is on the box. Okay, so that's that's actually uh, reasonable. Chris asking if we saw the reveal of Trish. Nope, did not. Second, I action do this with spoilers, particularly for this game. Third action. Here comes Norm. Fingerprint kit for two. You're plus <laughs> one because of uh, Milan. I got Milan here at plus one, fingerprints at a plus one, so I'm at a seven to its three. I believe. You can't hate this test. Minus one will get it. Two clues on. Now the big moment. All right. You get two shots, technically. Shortcut through. I'm going to attempt to move. Shortcutting through dimensions. What a handy skill to have. When you leave steps in your old test two, if you fail, shuffle it in the encounter deck instead of moving to your original destination, which would hunt me over to here, which would technically go to Realms Beyond. You got it. Okay, so do I have anything to add to this test? I do not. 
So I'm currently two up. And when I get one Retro money, Daniel, calling uh, auto fail time. It's a, it's the right time for it, yeah. Of course, uh, Christopher uh, successfully reacts. All right. This is a big moment. Minus five. Is that a fail? <laughs> yeah, it's a fail. You're only by one. <clears throat> no, it's a two test. I've only got a four brain. Oh. So how bad does this go? OK. So this gets shuffled back in. Mm -hmm. Then I end up over here. And I have no actions remaining. And then to get out of this, I, it, things get really bad. I get attacked by this thing. I, it's worth a time warp, right? Now, technically, you can take the sanity as cards if you're yeah. not worried about your deck. I can't do that right now, though. I've got to draw this Quantum Flux, because that's going to reshuffle my entire discard pile into my deck. Hmm. <laughs> well, so in retrospect, I should have started with one of those. <laughs> yep. So I time warp this, right? I mean, what? Where's the the, the Vegas odds card on the bag? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, where did that end up? Down here. What's this? Time and space. Time and space. Yeah. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh. Yeah, Alfonso, we're doing, uh, we're finishing up Arkham because uh, we, uh, I got sick on Friday and had to leave. So we're finishing up our Arkham campaign. We also kind of had a, uh, technically a more down week with champions because. Kind of waiting on. Uh, waiting on Rise of Red Skull. Rise of Red Skull. Hmm. All right, here we go. Lost in time and space. What do we got? All right, we got a minus one for every extra dimensional location in play. So one, two, three. <laughs> Four, five, minus, so that's a minus five on the skulls. Mm -hmm. That's two of them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, reveal another token, and if you fail, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until location is discarded. Uh, a minus three, and if Yog is Ugh. in play, it attacks you after the skill test. Uh, and then minus X, three, you would pass on a three? No, you pass on a two. I would pass on a two. You just took a two straight up, no, no cards? I don't have cards. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the gas mask is minus X. X is the shroud value of your location, so minus 3. So that fails a thousand ways. There's a lot of tokens that fail in there, yeah. Hmm. So I don't think... I think I'm just going to have to deal with this. I mean, maybe you save the time warp for the brain test here, but it's a brain test of three. So, like, is a skill skill test even in action? Can I even? I, I'm not even sure that I can reverse this. Well, it, you can as an initial cost to leave this. So you you're doing the thing. Yeah, here. So I would reverse it. I would get the shortcut back, basically. Okay. Yeah. You would basically move all the way to here and then play time warp to zoom back. Put the card back in. Here. Maybe I end up just staying there then. I time warp it back, get the shortcut back, and then. And then you need me, the child, to get the clue. <laughs> I need the, <laughs> I need the child. Maybe the I next draw, turn you can just punch it. Maybe <laughs> I draw <laughs> into uh, something that boosts my my brain. Hmm. You could also take it back. You have one action left. No, none actions. Hey, I just take it back. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Spanner. So what's the... So when do you... So what is the action that I'm reversing? Is not is it not a fast action shortcut? I thought it was a fast action. But I guess that's different. Fast event is not, is not a fast action. So I guess what would my last action have been? Would have been the, uh, but I would it would have been after immediately after I finished the investigate test. So maybe I can't time warp that at all. That's it. This is one thing that the game does that I don't understand. Code of X says you can time warp shortcut. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was so it was like a fast action, right? I think um, so. 
All right, so I'm going to do that. At worst, I think time work would take you back to before you investigated. Yeah. Done. Time work played. I don't get my money back. And now we know how bad the bag math is. The bag, bag math is bad. It's worse than we expected. Shortcut goes back in hand. If they're going to go through time and space, I can do it. That's right. And uh, I have the option to play any of my fast things, which I'm not. Uh, I think we're good. That's it. Floating Skull saying, hey, off topic, any idea of you folks are getting more Crucible War Boxes in stock soon? Uh, yes, if you're on that wait list, you'll be notified as soon as we have it. Uh, we're working on that right now, so we'll, we'll update that as soon as it's available. All right, done. So now we okay. go to the bad stuff. All right. Enemies. Enemies. Hunt. So he hunts. Mm -hmm. Converts to a down. doom? Yeah. Does it immediately advance? Nope. Excellent. That's actually fine. <laughs> fine by me. <laughs> uh, then we go doom on. Now we go card and resource. Yeah. You Quantum flex. Draw your flex. Oh, there's Mr. Are Rook with it. Are you kidding? Two weaknesses in a row. Mob enforcer. Prey, bear only, hunter. I can spend four resources to parlay with him and discard him. He engages with me, though, and I get a buck. Hmm. Maybe it's not regarded as an action. I've never seen Chris be wrong about anything before. Anyway, not worried about it. Okay. Now we do the bad stuff for us. So you got the mob enforcer now. Oh, okay. Well, at least it's something you're familiar with. Bad cards? Yeah. Prismatic Cascade. Put Prismatic Cascade into play and discard a random card from your hand. Okay. After the last clue on it is removed, discard Prismatic Cascade. So it's another one of these locations. Where does it go? Where does it come Ooh, from? Oh, okay. So it connects to the diamond. It doesn't... They don't connect to each other. So wait, are we stuck over here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're totally stuck over here in the... The universe of pain. The, the twilight zone. Ugh. Uh, so it comes in with two clues. Three. It's a three. It's a three for. There you go. Okay. Uh, that's fine by me. Your card. <laughs> that was not bad. Fast expands. Uh, test X or ugh. <clears throat> this is so bad. So basically, I'm testing five brain and take a horror for each point I fail by. We got this. I got a hallowed mirror coming down. I'm going to heal us up. Uh, OK, so before skill tests, there's a fast window, I think. Alexander saying, greetings from Taiwan. You guys stream got me reinvested in Arkham, and I'm fighting to find English cards out here, considering subbing for the upcoming cycle. That is. Amazing uh, and crazy. Yeah, hold on. We're we're we need to back up. So that card. What card did you draw? This one. Mm hmm We need to advance the agenda. Mm. Technically, Doom on. That's five. So this clears. Is easy. Okay. Yep. Agenda one A. Uh, side one B actually. Familiar echoes. Shuffle the encounter deck. Discard pile into the encounter deck. Then discard cards from the top of until a location is discarded. The lead investigator resolves that location's revelation effect. Check the campaign log if the investigators failed to save the students. <laughs> Read the following. We did. We what, absolutely what did. What students? We don't talk about the students. There's always been war in East a, Asia. A huge canine creature, alien <laughs> to your eyes and yet familiar, appears before you. The creature rushes forward and you prepare to fend it off. But to your surprise, it runs through you, towards a building that wasn't behind you moments before. Derby Hall from Miskatonic Museum, University. That's just so in my brain, Miskatonic Museum. The creature bursts through the building's front door and you hear screams of panic from inside, followed by the crunch of snapping bones and cries of pain. Each investigator takes a horror regardless of their location. Normal horror? One horror. Well, remember that. Save the students. Agenda 2A, past, present, and future. As you cross this realm, you catch occasional glimpses of reality, scenes from old memories, more recent visions from the past few days, and sometimes even events that you do not remember ever happening. Dot, dot, dot. After you move to a location by an encounter card, effect, take a horror. Four on to advance. Hey, okay, standard issue. So we've got a fresh encounter deck. I'm still looking at whether or not that was an action. I'm, I'm 
let's just say that I reversed the uh, reverse the investigate, did it again, and then did nothing. Yeah, that's fine. And we'll just call it a day. We'll so then not think about it. Now I get a bad card. Now you get a bad card, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. We're going to discard until a location is oh, yeah. revealed. Mm, yes, please. Get all of that nonsense out of this deck. There's one. Endless Bridge. Endless Bridge, it's a blue diamond blue that diamond. connects to a red square. Here's a blue diamond. There are no red squares to connect to. And it connects to bacon. Uh, bacon is here. These both connect to bacon. So it's technically like... Back to bacon. With me? This one doesn't go here, though. But they both go here. Yeah, they do. And they both, neither of them go back here. No, we kind of, once you go out, you kind of can't get back. I think that's the whole thing. Now I'm fully appreciating that. <laughs> I should never have left home. <laughs> this guy's an endless bridge, right? Mm-hmm. Balrog chasing us down. But interestingly... He can't go anywhere. He's just going to soak up these clues. He can go to Bacon. Yeah, back to Bacon. Uh... And Bacon can go to Endless Bridge. And then Endless Bridge can go back. So there's two more doom holding on. Yeah. And there's no way for me to get there. Uh-uh. Huh. <laughs> Would you look at that? Uh-huh. Okay. Huh. And it says, after an investigation. Oh, they have the same card. Endless Bridge. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Revelation, put it into play and lose two resources. So one of us has to lose two no, resources. No, that's you. You drew the card. Oh, it was discarding off the top of the deck. Oh, yeah. I still think it's you. <laughs> now I draw my bad card. Eh? Yeah, I think we can finally get there. <laughs> Towering <laughs> Luminosity. It's a green diamond, and it connects to the red and the green equal sign. We don't have a green equal sign or a red. And it says, put Tower and Luminosity into play and either place a Doom on it or take two damage. I'll tell you what I'm doing. Forced, after you fail a test while at this location, you must either flip a ta clue on Tower and Luminosity to its Doom site or discard Tower and Luminosity. What are you doing? What is this? Oh, this I'm going to try to figure out how to connect these things so that my brain works. One way connections are a one. Okay. <laughs> Is that more clear? <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> but that's okay. They're gone. Just stay frosty, would you? I'm trying. All right, my uh, my sec my card, my bad card. Mm -hmm. Did you do? Was there any kind of revealed effect? Yeah. Uh, place I, one doom on her. Take two damage. I What'd take you do? two damage. Wow, real team player. To your body? Yeah. Not your allies? They got to stay safe. That's how I don't die here. Well, it doesn't, none of it matters if you take it, it to your body. It does matter if I randomly have a do damage to an ally card pop up that I've never seen. It's, a, it's the same, right? Ah, uh, yeah, kind of. Except you can replace allies. I don't, there's not any physical healing that we have in the decks, is there? I have a hallowed mirror in my hand. Like, because you could blow out uh, Beat Cop and just replace it with a fresh one. The story of the game, really. Oh, you gotta get the agency back up into. That's each, fair. I'm for, gonna do that. For each card in your hand, if there's a copy of that card in your discard pile, take one horror to a maximum of three. Okay. There is no dupes. So I discard the top three cards of my deck. Ooh, stargazing is nice here. Ooh, the free water protection. Are right. ah, done. That's my hand. Doesn't go to the discard pile. Okay, well we're still in a pickle bun. <laughs> That's what the hamburger say to the hot dog. We're still in a pickle. <laughs> That's funny. I don't even know if that's a funny thing. <clears throat> Ah, uh, okay, so we need one clue. Can you get one clue? And maybe save me on my spaceship Earth? Two book to two shroud. <laughs> Those are my kind of test, I'll tell you what. <laughs> the odds are terrible. I can go to plus three. What does that get us? That means I beat... 
just beat it. I beat uh, the tablet. I beat the gas mask. I lose. To I'm going to do that. Let's take a crack at it. You going first? Yeah. I'm going to try to come hang out with you. It's the only option we have, right? You uh, pump it by plus one. Three up. You hip to this test? Yeah. Somebody's got to do this. Now, if... Hold on. Before I take this test. Mr. Rook's going to do yeah, some Yeah, you want to see if you can get a premonition? I'm going to go to six. Oh, great. I just got the, the worst weakness to get right now. <clears throat> What's it do? So I might, I might just can this and then try to leave. It, it means I lose ties. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of those. But can you do the thing where you get the card but you use it to draw three cards? With Dr. Armitage? To try to fish for whatever you're trying to fish for? It's just three money. You convert a card into oh, three money. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. One card to three cards seems good. What do, what do I get instead? I could get the jewel. Nobody's got time for that in this game. Ooh, I could get Mind Over Matter. I, I should probably do that. I'm going to get Mind Over Matter as my draw. Reshuffle. Mind Over Matter is the only way that I'm going to get out of Yogg Land. Here? Yeah. Yeah, it may, you can use your uh, book. That's right. Take a look. Hmm, crack the case. Very nice. OK, so I'll take Mind Over Matter. So instead of doing that move, I rook Mr. Rook first. Ah, now I just got to drop this, I think. Mm -hmm. But then do I shortcut? I mean, you could just I move. I could still move and then, and then working a hunch. All right, so yeah. drop this for two actions. Try this again. Bug. Use the shortcut. Just, just like interdimensional mud. We, we need a little little luck here. This is rough. Minus five. Counter spell would be really good there. All right, so what happens? Shuffle this into the encounter deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This says, when a location leaves play, move each investigator unengage enemy with that location to another dimension. Cannot be canceled. This says... Uh, when a force effect would move an investigator or enemy to another dimension, move them here instead. Cannot be canceled. Move them here instead. Hop into the realms beyond, and then uh, as an additional cost to leave, I've got to make a test, and if I fail, cancel the effects of the move. Now, where can I get? Oh, I got to get to another dimension. So I try to move to another dimension. I take a three-foot test, and uh, or brain. Well, I got a mind over. I got a mind over matter, so I can take the foot test at a six, because I'm technically plus one from. So at a three ahead. Yep. Yeah. It's gonna be one of those. Yikes! All right, all right. I'm gonna take all of the sanity and discards, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm just gonna quantum flux at the last second. That's that's my. I like it. That's my game, right? Right here. This right here. This is my game. Uh, that is your last action. That's it. Yeah. So now I'm gonna try to get a clue. <laughs> Let's parlay with the mob enforcer first. This for is four. one of those 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 uh, finale scenarios where you just realize that you're incapable of doing anything. You get wrecked. Yeah, seems like different than Carcosa. Carcosa felt like we were contributing members of investigator society. This one feels like we're just wasting our time. <clears throat> All right. Two. Oh, we're from the agenda. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Put it on. Two. A spent Mr. Rook is worth nothing. Can I fight him? No. No. Yeah, I can. Can no, I take I damage and cannot leave? Okay. Aside from the text on the cards, it seemed like I could. <laughs> I won't disagree with you there. <laughs> uh, I my best thing is taking two chances at a two to two. That's horrible. There's nothing do I, else. Do can I you draw, draw cards? Any cards that are worth having? What what would change the math here? If I get another evidence, I could technically. Look at it. <laughs> well, it's got two books on it. Why are you so poor? Where would all your money go? I pay it off the mob. Oh, nice. 
Nice. <laughs> if they track me down in <laughs> time and space. You throw some dynamite on yourself, put you out of misery there. That's one way to get it done. Oh, you could discard the top three and try to reveal a new location. That's useful. Yeah, I mean, but I'm not going to get better than a two. You're not going to get better than a two. No, but I don't even know better than a two. I mean, what does that even look like? What is there, three tokens, four tokens in here that succeed? Superstar, zero, zero, <laughs> uh, Put plus in a cheat one. code. <laughs> four out of, like, 16. It's like Pause 25 the game. I got two Superstar, shots Superstar, zero, zero, plus one. <laughs> left, right, left, right, <laughs> down, up, down, up, A, B, A, B. Uh, uh, Retro Dan says, welcome to Hotel California, Arkham Edition. Jimmy, yes, I, I do have double charisma. You can check out, but you can never leave. You can never even check out. I mean, um, I think my first step is try to draw a card. Yeah, well, you could Bugatti a couple of tests here. What's the worst that could happen? Horror? I mean, it doesn't matter. No, oh, actually, the hood wouldn't be awful for you. Uh, the tablet would be bad. Discarding your location with the gas mask would be bad as well, but these are these are things that are unlikely. <laughs> Two tokens that you mentioned could wreck me. I think I'm going to draw a card first. Okay. See if I get yeah, a buff. You, you only have so many weaknesses in there, right? Okay. I've already seen all of them. In fact. All right. I'm just going to take a YOLO at it. Okay, yeah. Heart of the cards. Heart of the cards. Heart of the bag. All right, here we go. Wasted in action. Heart of the bag. It could be more than just wasting. It could be actively very harmful. Well, you just got to explore time and space, you know? <laughs> What's in this prismatic cascade? Ooh. It's a plus one. Oh, my Get God. out of town, Leroy Brown. Are you marking those tokens? Yes. Just kidding, but... <laughs> okay, uh, let's go. Do we have to do it? Let's yellow ourselves right out of here, man. This is awful. There's got to be a right. better way here. Act 1A. Make it Act 1B. The nexus of dimensions. A light shimmers in the distance, and you head toward it to investigate. The wispy light drifts away from you, floating through the realm's strange gateways, ascending looping staircases and crossing through barriers you dared not cross earlier. <laughs> With little chance of finding the nexus on your own, you follow the light, hoping it is guiding you in the right direction. Put the set-aside, the edge it's of the universe zoe. location very into zoe. play. Okay. Edge Trusting the, the spirit in the sky. That's right. Uh, it's got a moon on it. Uh, anything connect to a moon? Yes, the dimensional doorway connects to a moon. Hey, we're making progress here, man. It's like Legos. Okay, so we're going to move the realm beyond over here. And it here connects to the, to the plus sign and the bacon. Where Norm can just hang out and get eaten. So this is the bait. It connects to itself. And then it connects to a plus sign that I haven't seen yet. She kidnapped herself. You said it yourself, dude. Okay, Act 2A, Into the Beyond. You continue to follow the wisp of light through the treacherous landscapes, though the tre treacherous landscapes make it a difficult quarry to chase. Action, discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. Choose a location discarded by this effect and resolve its revelation ability. Objective, if an investigator enters the edge of the universe, advance. Oof. New goal. So you can get... You can get to a plus sign from here. You can get to a red square from here. Are there any we red gotta squares? we got to find those locations. Oh, my gosh. I think I'm going to be over here in yeah. the realms getting eaten while I try to discard locations it's on for it. you. You being over there is kind of fine. For you? Well, like, it, you have the card. <laughs> so, like, if you get two turns, is like ten cards deep, and then you just flip it. You're right. You're right. You're right. And you're if right. you get that again, it's just like you can just deal with him for it. Literally, you can... You can take care of time and space for me. Hey, I've got time warps. I've got counter spells. This is this is. I'm literally turning into Norman the White here. I like it. You know, back. This He's is back. My fight with, with the after, Balrog. Oh, you're about to be Norman the White. I'm about. Yeah, this, this is the struggle. I'm I'm tossing through time and space with like this that. thing. You forgot to say fly, you fools. <laughs> um, so, what do you need? Uh, you have to have at least two clues to move. Uh, well. So oh, we spent our clues, didn't we? Yeah, you're going to have to YOLO about three more plus one tests before that one's going to happen, I think. Oh, where's my astral travel? Interesting, interesting. It is kind of ironic that this is where Open Gate would have been so good. And I cut it first scenario. Yep. Can you imagine if I just drop an Open Gate right here, and then I can just drop it where I am? and It, just it would be good. See ya. Um, all right, so... We're going to... Thank you, Carl, very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm much better. Uh, I'm much better because uh, because I'm not vomiting anymore. Uh, 
Sleeker's Mobile saying, why can't normally leave? So he can leave. He's just got to pass this foot or brain test on uh, Realms Beyond. I've basically got three shots at it on a Mind Over Matter Yeah, because he can technically get to another dimension, but he has to pass that wild test. Okay, enemies first. Yeah, are we done? Is that the end of your turn? Yeah, we. I paid off the mob, drew a card, got a clue. Okay. Use the clues. Done. So Hunter's going to hunt. He yeah. hunts here. This turns into a doom. Well, he'll hunt towards the nearest investigator. I don't know where that will put him. Because, like, is he gonna? Is the nearest investigator trying to? Is he trying to get to another dimension? So, like, let's follow his path, right? He can go to Bacon from here. Did that? Oh yeah. Okay, that one. From got Bacon, you. he could go to Endless Bridge, or he could go here. Oh, it's the only place he could possibly hunt to. He can't move anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then you're you're right on. Unless that means he just doesn't hunt, but I don't buy that. No, yeah, he's he's gonna keep moving. He's just trying to find interstellar trouble. Doom. Cardinal resource. Oh, you get actually a bad time. I get a bad time. All right, so Yogg's of Thought's gonna attack me. I'm gonna take one damage. Take it on Mr. Rook. I'm sure it's very, very troubling to be in the middle of time and space. Wonders. It would be bothersome to the brain. Uh, then I can discard X cards instead of taking the Horda. So I can discard five, which I will do. Oon. One, two, three, mm. four, five. Fill them with the good ones. Hey, I'll take a two cost jewel of Ariolus. Okay. Okay. Enemy shouldn't move. Is that how that works? That, that if you can't uh, hunt, if there's no clear it, path, then you don't hunt at all? If so, we really messed up. That's fine. Because there should be can, clues on this. We can reverse that one easily. I don't know if that's in the rules. If you guys know if that's in the rules somewhere, like, for Hunter. Yeah, because this would have advanced either way. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> there's no actual path. They wouldn't move. All right, okay. so then this, and then this. Drop it. And this. And technically, technically, one of these is still gone, right? We started the turn with one of these being gone. He ate it last But last he wouldn't turn. have moved here. That's the point. Well, it's all right. Just stick him here. We already did all of that trouble. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, if you, 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 this would have advanced either way. Mm. So there should just be two clues on each of these. Because you can't. there's nowhere for him to go. Okay. I'm into it. I think it, it's still in our detriment, actually, because I think one of those is what made it advance as soon as it did. But it's fine. So he just stays at the dimensional doorway forever. And, until we get in this pocket, and then he's alive. Okay. All right, I'll buy it. He's a sleeping hunter. All right, Dumon. Actually, card and resource? Yeah, card and money. There we are. Ooh, flipping into that water protection feels so good. It's insane. <clears throat> okay. Then we go to, you put the Doom on. Doom on. Bad cards? Uh, bad cards. Here we go. Infinite doorway. Attached to your location. As initial cost to move into or out of attached location, discard the top card of your deck. If the discarded card is a weakness, draw it. Otherwise, for each copy of the discarded card in your hand, Hand or play area, you must either take a horror or discard that card. That's not bad, right? Not bad at all. Yeah, he should eat a clue from where we spawned him. Where did we spawn mm. him? Dimensional? So that's perfect. Okay. That, then we were actually totally clear. Clean. If I'm at an extra dimensional location, no. You know? Discard it. Otherwise, take two damage. Oof. That's the thing I can't have. I'll take the free water protection while I've got it. Take a horror instead. Trade a horror for two damage. That's what I'm in the business of. <laughs> Am I right? Okay. Do, do, do. All right, so, um, I mean, the long story short of this is I can actually make a downtown run from another dimension to the endless bridge through the dimensional doorway to the edge of the universe with two clues. This is what you got to do. Send Norman on the on And the I'm chase. just going to be punching the button to see if I can connect there in a different way. Let me do that first. Yeah, punch the button because I handling this interstellar traveler is not my Yeah, like if I, if I can get over there, it's going to be great. All right, so I'll punch the discard the three cards, uh, choose the location, and resolve its revelation effect. We got a stop sign and a plus sign. You only get one. Yeah, the stop sign is tear through space. It's got surge, but it enters play and it, let's see, it, it connects to my location. Surge wouldn't matter, I don't think, in this case. And it connects to this location. Oh! 
And it connects to... You found the... You found I, the I found... The, and it connects to this location. How is that possible? It's a tear through space, dude. We also got steps of... Yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. If I have a... I want, like, a mug with this on it that says, yeah, girl. Uh, it is a plus sign, which also connects to my location, and it connects to the green diamond and the moon. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Osh, gosh, but I need two clues to do that. Yeah. So this one's better because I need to come deal with this cat. So I'm going to take tear through space, I believe. Revelation, put it into play. At the end of the round, either place a doom on it or discard it. Ugh. What's but I have two one? actions left. So I literally move to it and move here. But it'll do that as long as it's in the game, right? But I just need to get out of here. You're coming this way. Yeah, what's the other one do, though? The other one, let me see the symbols on it. I need, I'm a visual learner. Okay, so it connects to moon and then null green diamond. So you could move to green diamond. Green diamond goes nowhere, right? Green diamond is the, currently the end of the road. It's a trap. So I see what you're saying. So, but literally I can, because I hit it on the first one, I can move here and then move here. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine. And you're fine. And but the it's just going to keep, keep adding doom, right? Is that the whole thing? Yeah, at the end of the round, either place a doom on it or discard it. We can just get oh, rid of it. Oh, you can get rid of it. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so take a little trip through the tear. So we're going to go tear it through time and space. It does surge. I assume it happens even if I... I don't no, think No, it so. doesn't. It didn't, not, you're not drawing it, right? No, it's discard it and choose one to put into play. Yeah. And then it's got one clue. Can you can you grab that clue on your no way? No way. Huh. I, have, I have two actions left. I just got to get through this. Yep, you're right. All right. All right, so I'm going to move to the tear, and then I'm going to move to the endless bridge. And the nice thing is he's going to come and engage me, and, like, I get to start dealing. I, I don't have my survival knife in play yet, unfortunately. It's very true. These are all very true but things. But here we are. Okay. I, was, I was literally... Dude, that was perfect. ...built for this moment. <laughs> all right, paying one for mind over matter. This is our shot. That is so fortuitous that that happened. Look at this stack. Oh, I, wonder I, how, I wonder how many tears through space there are in this stack. Zero. That blows my mind. One. Uh, do you do something when you move out of here? You don't. After the last clue is removed, no. Oh, infinite doorway. Additional cost to move. Discard the top card of your deck. If it's a weakness, mm -hmm. draw it. Otherwise, survival knife. How many are in your hand? One. Uh, take a horror or discard the card from your hand. <laughs> Discarding that survival knife is taking a horror. That's right. <laughs> that is the most painful thing a game could ask me to do. But I need to get some allies going. I'll say that. Yeah, Eclectic. Uh, Arkham on Monday. We're finishing up. This is the last scenario of the campaign of Dunwich Legacy. We were going to do it last Friday, and then I, I got very sick and had to, to cancel. So we're finishing it up this week, and then we're going on break for the next week. All right, Norm. Mind over matter. What a fitting card to try to get out of the realms beyond. It's beautiful. It's the really theme, about the brain. When you actually slow down long enough to tell a story, like I want to, next campaign I'm going to do that more where it's like, I'm going to actually try to like, whatever whatever actions we're taking, it's like, how did this come to be? Yeah. Because well, this is fantastic. You know, I started dealing in time warps and I landed on the realms beyond. And that's pretty much how Norm runs. And I just cruise through a tear through space. <laughs> Superman style. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, so I've got first shot, I've got a three foot, which is using uh, books instead of feet. So it's a six versus a three. Three up, and it's a minus three. Baby, baby. The old gods are good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, first action was there. <laughs> uh, Spanish says, ah, so you're a typical Monday evening then. Second action, move to you. Third action, let's fingerprint get that these That is right, get those who's, clues. Who's, who's, whoa, whose whoa, fingerprints whoa. are in this building? On this endless bridge. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm currently... I'm just picturing us like running along this endless bridge and you're like, wait a second, <laughs> let me get my magnifying glass. <laughs> my so, fingerprint kit. <laughs> so, there was a mob enforcer here, wasn't there? I paid him off. All right, so is this the best place to get these clues? My take on that, by the way, from a story perspective, is that this is time and space. So they're in my brain. And they're in time, and they just showed up. And it's like, if I pay them, they'll walk the other direction and go through the portal. <laughs> pay them. Pay him. Pay, pay that him. man his money. Pay him. Okay, so let's think about this for a second before I make this uh, bold decision. Seven to four is three up. What kind of test is this? Do you have any book pumps? 
<laughs> Do you? You know that uh, <laughs> no, Great don't. Gatsby gif? It's not even, it's not even imaginable. <laughs> it's like it's about the guy laughing. Uh, that's where, That was me. All right, well. I'd love to. I'm going to pitch the well, it, corpse it, it, of Christopher and the jewel. <laughs> you may as well if you have that card you're going to play later to shuffle it all back in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm with you on that. And this is a fine time to fail, honestly. I'm at plus five now. It's not a fine time to fail because I've invested a lot into it. But, like, of all the things to fail, this is not the worst one. Plus one. Didn't even need it. Down the road. Somebody call the doctor. I need a doctor. Nailed it. Look at this. Hey, we're about to go to the edge of the universe. We might bruh. make it out here. That edge one, of the universe two, art is really good. Investigate. Also, the flavor text on it says, Done. Nothing could have possibly prepared you for this. It's beautiful and terrible to behold. It's a gorgeous card, Edge of the Universe. Mm -hmm. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. All right. At the end of the round, we're not there yet. So first, hunters are going to hunt. You're mine, my friend. One money? One money. One money. And then I take two horror and a damage. Yes, yeah, so then enemies attack. Any enemies so that let's are go engaged one, here. Two. And then I'll take the damage because Beat Cop's about to do some work. <laughs> this Beat Cop's all over this Interstellar Traveler. That's right. Hey, buddy, I've been tracking you for thousands and thousands of non-years. Okay, then we go to Can everything ready. Yeah, put it where, yeah, yeah, where, yeah. where, where you need to go. Fine. Everything ready. Mm -hmm. Including the old fingerprint kit here. Oh, I need to get my Mulan money, so which my, I forgot. My goal is to bury this Interstellar Traveler and then play my mirror to heal in a minute. I can. Cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally endless bridge. I'm going to have a mirror, and it's going to be great. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Ooh, the miss. Finally, ah. the miss. I get a miss for one cost. Oh, fascinating. I just drew Zebulon Waitley. Oh. He's got a four sanity soak. What are you doing up here, Zeb? <laughs> I brought him because we needed him for the case. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, clearly you're familiar with these matters. Um, <laughs> all right, right. Uh, then Dumon. Dumon. Uh, actually, end of the round. So end of the round. Also, how good. Discard this. You, you cleared those clues so that the initial traveler couldn't consume them into doom. If you had failed, it'd be doom. That's right. And one less clue it's for you to it's skip nothing. Up. It's nothing but net here. All right. Uh, I get a bad card. If your investigator leaves, place a doom or discard. No. Investigator leaves. No end of round stuff. Nope. Nothing. Put the doom on and uh, yeah. Did it. Let's do the cards. Oh no. Conglomeration of spheres. Oh, your worst nightmare. Pray. I, I get it either way. It's yours. Gain a buck. You've got some. <laughs> you got some. Uh, I know exactly how I'm handling this. You want me to evade it with miss? Excuse me, miss. I mean, I, I'll let you just do your thing and we'll see what happens. But Spike all I know is. I'm going to spike the dynamite into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle this. I like that a lot. I'm just going to blow up the room. Uh, he does still get a doom. This guy does. Uh, your guy here. If there's not a doom, if there's not a clue to eat, he still gets a doom mm. when he uh, enters the location. Doom on. Okay. I'm just saying the dynamite takes him out. And then I get three here. And then it's punch in time. And then it's punch three. And you're going to blow yourself up too, right? I'll take three. Yeah. It's, it's a mere flesh wound. You better hope that uh, Beyond the Veil doesn't uh, come into play, though. Uh, we got it. We're going to win by then. Okay, we got it. All right, and then my bad card. Yep. Tear through space. Right back here. Yeah. All right, so not as, lucky, not as lucky as I once thought. Test five. For each point I fail by, discard the top card called? of my deck. It's called Visions of Futures Past. Thank you. Can't pop the card up if I don't say the name. Here we go. Five brain. Don't really care. A plus one. <laughs> I don't even discard. No, I get a, I get miss. Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's unreasonable. It's crazy. It's unreasonable. All right. You go first. Let's go see what's at the edge of the universe. Okay, so you're wanting me to move move into the edge of the universe. That's what we're looking at here. You just move, move, have an action left for mm -hmm. something. I'll probably play the miss. How do you play it? 
from the top card of my deck. Oh, you just you can um, just play. Yeah, I'm Norm I Withers. <laughs> old man I'm Withers. Norman, I'm old man Withers. Do you play it before you go in there in case there's enemies? I don't know. I might need an action. Or if you have the, I, I mean, you can oh, take an attack of opportunity, right? Let's no, I can't. I, I refuse. Let's play it now. But like, what if you get in there and one action is like? What if I get in there? I gotta discard my quantum flux. That would be that's the, worst. the real question. Mm. That's the real question. I could also Bugatti this clue on the way with working a hunch. It seems like it wouldn't be bad, ultimately, right? I don't know. I can't imagine a world where clues are bad. But it's also a two shroud, and that's pretty pathetic to working a hunch on. A child such as Zoe could get it. Yeah. As proved earlier. This is at least two clues. Is that Arkham giving us a hint? No. I'm going to play Miss and run in the edge of the universe. You don't even spin the clues. No, that's true. That's very true. OK. So I'm playing Miss because it's my security blanket. Mm, perfect. It's exactly what we needed, an internal injury. <laughs> What's it do? From Yogg. At the end of my turn, I take one direct damage yeah. until I spend two actions. Not worried about it. Yeah, I guess I should have just. Can you imagine if I had hit like a couple of discards off that uh, weakness? Or off of that encounter card, I would have just discarded it. Hand me a clue over there. Thank you. OK, second action, move. And then after I leave, I either place a doom. So let's place a doom here. And then boom. All right, remember, it's beautiful and terrible to behold. You must have at least two clues in order to move to Edge of the Universe. It has two shroud, two clues per investigator on it. Investigators of the Edge Universe cannot draw cards during the upkeep phase. That's fine. So four goes on, and then I will advance. I'm advancing now. Yep. You reach an impossibly dense pitch black void and realize that this place is where all of reality, all that is and all that ever will be, ends. In its center, you see a minuscule rift suspended just out of reach. When you peer through the tear, you're surprised to see the peak of Sentinel Hill. Somehow you've reached the other side of the rift now you must find a way to close it for good. Close the rift. The unearthly stones on the ground are inscribed with some sort of seal. Approaching them causes a voice to enter your mind, speaking in an alien tongue. Oh my gosh, are we about to get Yithian? <laughs> All right, same thing. Discard the top three cards, etc., And then investigators at the edge of the universe can spend six clues to advance. OK, you have two, and there's four here. That's easy math. So I've got a fingerprint kit. I've got a working a hunch and a single test. It's done. All right, mine. Let's see yeah. what what old Zoe can get up to. Let's do this. I'm not going to dynamite because if I play the dynamite, I get attack of opportunity. Yeah, that's right. So the first thing I'm going to do is now technically, can I swing the blade? If I know I'm going to hit, can I then use the B cup? Uh, after the the bag is revealed, you have a fast action window. Yes. So like a beat cop, do two damage, it would take care of him. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just gonna swing. He's a four. I'm at four, five, six, seven. So I'm ahead by three. <laughs> I like that meandering look. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that means Let's one, two, three, three four. <laughs> Get your one on the floor. Um, let's go plus. This is, it's, it's. Plus two, so I'm ahead by five. It's interesting, because it's not, uh, is that the do direct damage card? Yeah. Are you, you're ditching that? Yeah. That seems like exactly what you need. Mm-mm. Okay. Got the skull. It's a minus. Five. Max is a minus five. I'm ahead by five, so oh, I hit. Oh, nice. Nailed it. So we're going to beat cop for one, use a charge, which will do three damage here. When he goes away because I'm defeating him, I get to heal a horror. Hada. And draw a card. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Lobby bar right there uh, in Don't the be saying there's no window. I, I looked at that chart last night. I'm almost certain that there is, but I could be wrong. Uh, Daniel says, need to discard for a location from the act debt. After you remove to a location by an encounter card effect, take one more. I don't know what that one is. Discard a card from something. Is it this the back of this one? No, it doesn't say anything. I don't think so. I don't know what that one's about. 
Uh, need to discard for a location from the act deck. Oh, you mean like uh, use this ability? We don't have to do that. No. Not at all. Okay, so I took care of that. And then now. This is discarded, that's right. I have. Well, no, this came into play. No, it came into play this round. I thought it did, yeah. It was your bad card. It was my bad card, which was nice. And then it surged. When you reveal the next act, you discard a card. No. Close the rift. It does not does not say that. Discard the top three cards in the encounter deck as an action. It's an optional action. We just get to use it. Like we've been doing the whole time. Next, I'm going to play as my second action, Spectral Razor. Ooh, nice. So I'm an eight, and it would do three damage to it. Um, a nine, technically. So I'm ahead by eight. That's very nice. Beautiful. Spectral Razor, you don't... Who cares about the spheres you got Spectral Razor? That's fine. Minus three, yeah. Yep. So I pass. Ooh, no. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. If Yogg-Sothoth is in play, it attacks you after the skill test. Whew. All right. Take an attack. Ooh. One health and up to five discards. Or sanity. Split across as you like. I'm beginning to think the plan here is not to let you run out of cards. Yep. Well, I have a really good play. So I, I haven't seen agency back up. Mm -hmm. And I have calling, calling in favors, favors in my hand. Yeah, it's tough. So I think I take the damage and the sanity on the grass. And then I'm going to look up a little timing window chart. Yeah, good, good luck. Figure that one out. <laughs> I wonder, I know Arkham DB had like a rules section somewhere. Uh, where would that be? All right, let's take. Uh, by the way, that was a Yithian. That no way. Buried, yeah. Blow it away, man. Uh, Never so again. So I will take one and one on the grass. He's going to go. And then I have Here we go. four Here we go. sanity left to take. So I'm going to take that directly onto me. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, yes, that's correct. So... There's a window before skill test begins, before you commit cards. There's a window after you commit cards. After you reveal chaos token, there's no window. But then the, after the skill test ends, there's a window before your next action begins. So basically, you see that the test is successful, you resolve that test fully, and then before your next action, you can use the beat cop to kill the thing. So it's kind of the same. I always think of it the wrong way, but it... So I'd have to beat cop first and then swing. Well, you could just swing and then beat cop before you do your second action to get the enemy off the table. But if I want to defeat the enemy with the blade, yes, you'd have to I'd beat, have to cop, beat cop first. first. Yes, yeah. you would. Yep. Yeah. So Hundo. basically, I think my strategy here: will he ready before he attacks? No. Yeah. No. No. Attacks and then everything unexhausted, and then we go to the the good stuff. If I if an attack of opportunity happens, when does it resolve? Ugh. I mean, is that after my action is done or in the middle of my action? The moment you initiate the action, I think you resolve it, and before the action, like, proceeds. I think you say, like, for instance, if I mm. said I'm going to play a card, then I would get an attack of opportunity, and then the card would come into play. Yeah. So and I'm gonna I'm gonna discard I'm gonna discard two cards and take two damage, because I have to be able to take okay. the damage. Yeah. Oh, man, you're going... Oh, there it is. You only have one in there? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How devastating. That's actually hilarious. Okay. <laughs> uh, then I have one action left, so I'm just going to punch this conglomeration of spheres. Boy, that's really the worst enemy for you, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm ahead by four, so we'll see what happens. 
Oh, it's a superstar, dude. Two damage. That's two damage. That's a ready for the beat cop right there. Give him the beats. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a nice, it actually worked. Uh, and then if you hit it with the Enchanted Blade, it doesn't uh, doesn't eat it yeah. because it's out of play. Because it's gone. Uh, okay, that was my turn. So I exhaust. Yeah, me too. Done. And then first things first, enemies are going to enemy. Yep. So I'm going to take one and one. Ugh, gross. There's one stacked under the... Okay. Boy, we're getting down to it, aren't we? And then we are, we really are. Uh, then we do ready everything, draw cards. And then we do ready everything, draw cards, etc. Etc. Oh, this should have been revealed, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Gain the money. Man, great. Got a counter spell just waiting on top here. I'm not going to wait too much longer for the old quantum flux here. Well, I think we we advance the agenda, right? I when, think we'll be able to do it when and where possible. God willing. Um, Doomon, it's going to advance that that puppy. Yep. See how bad this gets. Probably fine. Agenda two B. The price of failure. Shuffle the encounter discard pile in the encounter deck. Then discard cards from the top until a location is discarded. The lead investigator resolves the location's revelation effect. Check the campaign log. If it, you could technically use the beat cop too if you wanted to. After it readies. I think there's a window in there somewhere. I think I save it because it can soak two for me if I need it. Yeah. And I can deal with this. Yeah, totally fair. Check the campaign log. If at least one name is recorded under sacrifice to Yog. Earl. You hear a familiar voice calling out to you. Earl. You enter an impossibly shaped building of cracked stone. No, don't. The voice cries. You rush toward the voice down a set of steep, narrow stairs. Upon reaching the bottom, you find yourself in the hidden chamber from Dunwich. Bound by shackles, you see those you have failed to save, bloodied and maimed. Only Earl and the, the students. Just Earl. A creature with a man's face <laughs> feeds from a corpse on the ground. The head of the corpse turns to face you, and a sharp pain stabs your heart. Each investigator tests X brain, or X is the number of names recorded under sacrifice One. to Yogg. For each point an investigator fails by, that investigator takes a damage. Okay, so one damage max. So, uh, totally fair. one to my four. Yeah, good test, good test. A couple of questions coming in here on the, uh, on the, uh, on the chat here. Hey, you Pass. succeeded. Um, Keenblade saying you can charge it to kill him, so Zach didn't attack with the Enchanted Blade because the spheres would have eaten it afterwards, so he just did a normal punch. Got the Superstar, did additional damage, so can't charge the blade there. Mark is asking, you could use your beat cop again now, right? That is correct. There's somewhere in there that you can do that, um, but you wanted to hold on to it in case you need to soak damage with it, which makes sense, because you may as well just punch him again. Um, and all the students, that's right, Spanner. <clears throat> all right, uh, do you want to go ahead and test your brain? And then can you play this solo? Absolutely, Django Fett, you can play this solo with the best of them. So I take that test as well. One right? test, yeah. Ugh, that's an attack from the big boy. Minus three and old that's big, Biggie McGee. Probably worth counterspelling. I don't know. It, just blink it. Yeah, just cancel the token. I really want that counterspell for this Edge of the Universe test. Emily saying, Inspector Lagrasse is not in Arkham DB. Where did you get it? It's from the consternation on the constellation fan scenario that we played in the middle of this uh, campaign. I just don't want that. <clears throat> if I take, like, I would have to take three sanity, put one on Henry, one on Rook, one damage on Rook, lose two allies, take three sanity to not lose the counterspell. That I can then use on the Edge of the Universe test. Or I could use the counterspell now for one, ignore it entirely. And then uh, roll into uh, roll into the edge of the universe test with three actions. I mean, I like. Yeah, I'll let you solve it. I like. <laughs> I like. I could use counterspell now. Start out the turn with a quantum flux. Get that reshuffle going on. Although it doesn't really matter because I don't have the edge of darkness thing. Or it only matters if he makes you do it. Yeah. I want to keep that counterspell. 
imagine all of the things, like, because I'm going to fingerprint kit, although I'll be like five up. So it really won't matter, will it? Yeah, I think you're fine. Yeah, I'll be like, it's only a two shroud. Um, so I'm just going to counterspell it. See ya. Noise. OK. Uh, Agenda 3A is breaking through volume two, because <laughs> this is the return to. Oh, that's right. Throughout this warped dimension, no matter where you travel, there is a haunting shape in the distance. At first, it appears as a disk, like a black moon with many wriggling arms. But as time passes, you can tell it's growing larger and larger. Forced after you're moved to a location by an encounter card effect, take a horror, six shroud, two, six, six doom to advance, discarding locations until we get a location. Mm. Get those big enemies out of here. Prismatic Cascade. Yeah. Comes in with three. Put into play and discard a random card from your hand. Cool. Or me. I mean, how. how it's a lead investigator. Is it always? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to roll for you? How many you got? Six? Seven. Seven. There's one card. One card, Wooly. I don't even know. How do you roll for a seven? Just roll a d6 and see if you get a one through six. <laughs> I guarantee you I'll get one through six. So roll first, <laughs> and if it's a six, you take the last card. All right, know. so I'll do uh, odds will go one to three on the next one, and evens will go one to four on the next one. So it's even, so we'll go one, two, three, four, two. Is that the best one? It's the second best one. It's my Hallowed Mirror. <laughs> Dang it. The Hallowed Mirror is awesome. OK, so that was all just Doom. And now we do the bad cards? Yep. Man, that was a lot to resolve for nothing. Vast Expanse. If there are no extra dimensional locations in play, it gains search. Yeah, there's... Otherwise, test X brain, where X is the number of extra dimensional locations in play. For each point I fail, I take a horror. It's a million. Is there a max five or anything on there? Max five. OK. Uh, your brain is being very taxed. I'm not even sure that you can wound. You might be dead here. Could be. So I'm at a four to a five test. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, can I play this? No, I can't. Oh, it's so close to being playable. Oh, All right, let's gosh. do this. I will boost it by three. Hold on. Hold okay. on. There's no way for me to draw a card here, right? Rook was almost there. Any fast actions that will draw me a card. Please apply. No. I need this in hand. I could cancel that. I'm going to add a three. I'm going to head by two. Uh, yeah, and we're discarding this. Ready? Yeah. What do you got? Minus, Minus five? Five. Take three. Okay. One. See ya. Two, three. There it goes insane. Oh my gosh. Just like that. That's devastating. I'll just be over here fingerprint kidding. Finish it. <laughs> Finish him. It's so funny because this water protection is right here. It's right here. If there was a way to draw, if he had one secret on him or anything, it would work. Devastating. All right, well, hey, you got the spheres, though. That was good. Almost. <laughs> uh, Steven could cancel that. No, I couldn't. Um, I already played one this round. I think that's right. Once per round, you can play the top card as if it were in your hand at minus one. So I already played the counter spell to cancel. What did I cancel? It was the test on the Doom. Yeah, on the you canceled the attack that you would have taken. Yeah. That was off of an uh, agenda-based test, so that was already at the top of the Mythos phase. Ah. Them's the beats. Finish. Yeah. All right. Finish I'm him. I'm going to get the bad card here. Beyond the Veil. There it is. Ten cards. I die. A Baleful Welcome. Choose two of the following actions. For the remainder of the round, each investigator cannot do this. Choose three of the actions. Fight. I can't, I can't fight, evade, or move. No, I can't fight, evade, or play. You're just investigating. I can't fight, evade, or move. All right, Norm. Storm and Norman. Here we go. Uh, first call. 
fingerprint kit. Tooth shroud to six, seven. I'm up by five. Yeah, Mythos phase is the first phase of the round, but we also, the counter spell is used during the Mythos phase already. The first thing you do is you add the Doom, and then you advance the agenda, and then that created a test that I used counter spell on, and then we started drawing the cards. Nailed it. Swoosh. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody knows. <laughs> We need Jim. Jim to roll yeah. in. Okay. That was the first action. A great one, if I do say so myself. Second action. Let's do a normal investigate. Let's give it a. <laughs> I'm four up. I can beat that skull. Let's give it a five. All right. Here we go. Got it. Boom. All right. Working a oh hunch for two. Boom. Got it. You want to you go? go? Let's go. Let's go. Act <laughs> three. B. Mending the tear. You are utterly exhausted. Yes, I am with no idea as to what can be done to close the rift. It is too distant to touch, and nothing you do has any effect. There's nothing here to guide you apart from the unearthly words that are seeping into your mind. Just then, you hear a familiar voice within the echoing chorus and feel yourself compelled to repeat it. Claude Ostium. You <laughs> whisper it first, the words on the tip of your tongue. Hamster. <laughs> you close your eyes to concentrate, and the echo grows louder. When it ends and you open your eyes, you face nothing but an inky abyss, and the tear has vanished. Remove the edge of the universe from the game. Put the set aside tear through time location into play. So when that gets removed from the game, I go to the Yogg land, don't I? Well, remove it from the game after you are moved by a location and counter card effect. That's not that. You don't take a horror. When a location leaves play, remove each investigator and enemy here. And that says what you know. <laughs> And get shot through the slingshot of time and space again. This is again. the moon door. This connects back to here, and it connects to the plus sign, and it connects to the bacon. Do I have to go through the same? You have to get back to here. With that conglomeration, you luckily, got the I got the here. miss. All right, you ready for this? Mm hmm. Act 4A. I Fi finding a new way. I wonder if I should have played Quantum Flux before I did this. Uh, that's fine. If that tells me to discard a bunch of cards, I'm going to be furious. With no clear way out of this dimension, you seek another path. Discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. Okay. Or, action. Discard the top three cards of the entire choose a location, et cetera. Objective. If each undefeated investigator has resigned, advance. Okay. So this is the last one. But how do you resign? The world against norm. Tear through time. It's got to be the tear through time. Okay. So no... Oh, but I've got to hold on to that ward of protection. How many actions you got left? One. But I can't move. You can evade them. I can only investigate and play. I can't evade either. I've got this baleful mm. thing. I can only investigate and play cards. <laughs> you think I'm tapping an opportunity for a massive thing? Mm -mm. Okay. He says he doesn't do... So you shuffle that back in, right? That's easy. Yeah. Because that's right. Then you can just take all the damage as cards and not care. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll play as our last action. Quantum Flux, shuffle everything, remove Quantum Flux from the game. Hmm. I could have, before being defeated, fast actioned my beat cop to get rid of the conglomeration of spears. It's true. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, you, have, you have missed, so it's kind of fine. Uh, yeah, so because of Baleful Welcome, I chose I can only investigate and play, so I can't uh, move. I could draw cards if I wanted to, but what I'm what I'm worried about, I've got to take five damage from old Yogman, and I just want to make it happen. I don't think I would have beat Cop though, because I would have been trying to survive. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 
Nobody knows the trouble I see. I was ultimately one action shy because I had that uh, calling in favors a couple turns in a row. But I never, we I, like, were just I had to almost, use my actions yeah. to get over here and then I got piled on by the enemies. That's usually the sign of a good scenario. You're just. Um, uh, if this is not the first copy, oh, if this is not the first copy, choose three of those actions instead. So move, investigate, play, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just stay here. Had to happen at some point, yeah. What a clutch card. Yeah. OK, a counter spell on top. Can't hate that. All right, and here we go. To Yogg and beyond. Um, go to the end of my turn. I take a direct horror. Don't know, not anything in there. Borrow from you, your corpse. Direct damage or horror? Direct damage, sorry. Then uh, we take an attack, take one damage. I'm going to go ahead and off. <laughs> Finally off, Mr. See Rook. See you, Mr. There. Rook. And then I'll take five cards off the top. I think I'm just going to do it directly. Oh, come on, weaknesses. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> ah, shortcut might be okay. That's going to be great. Uh, and then this is probably gone. Yep. Okay, and then we go to money, card, any hunter on the board? Mm -mm. Ooh, the Ace of Rods. What's it do? Play it for two, and then I can take a turn that gives me four actions. Hmm. Uh, four actions, and one of them I get plus two on a test. That seems relevant. Well, it might be the only way I can get out of this place. <laughs> Fascinating. If the Ace of Rods ends up being the MVP card, how fitting. I mean, I've got three. Gambler Norman hitting the Ace on the river. Give it to me. That's yeah. theme. Yeah, it's nuts. Yes, one of those horrors could have could have gone to Mr. Rook. That's correct. Seems wise. Yeah, it's fine. It's I mean, it, you know, what's the difference? Unless I run out of deck, it really doesn't matter. Could have been an extra weakness out of the deck, you know? Well, um... Okay, so we do the bad stuff before I get ahead of myself here. You do the attack. Mm -hmm. Then we get a I do a card, gain a thing, do a doom on, and then bad card. give me the bad and stuff. And you get mine too, right? Just kidding. No, I don't. Tear through space. This space again? Yeah. Oh, great. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. Huh? Kind of. I mean, I'm still just Bugatti downtown, right? But that's like the most reasonable, just random Har card harmless. to get. Harmless, yes. Absolutely harmless. All right. Okay. Luckily, those mists let you move as well. You can only use mists once around. Well, so what does he say? Cannot be evaded. Can I even? Can I attempt to evade something that can't be evaded? Oh, probably not. But you just move and you hit the test, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Them's the beats now. Uh huh. The real question is oh, like. Oh yeah, this has surge. Not right, the most right, harmless right, card. Right, right, right. Yeah. How about a Yithian Star Seeker? Another dimension it spawns. Do you, do you see another? Oh no, that's the bad one. When you, oh no! When this thing attacks, it's these stupid Yithians. When they attack an investigator with more than ten cards in the discard pile, place a doom on it. How fantastic! Okay, that's a miss opportunity for me. A miss opportunity. <laughs> Yithian Star Seeker. That's cool art, though. I like these Yithians. Uh, I don't. Okay. So my question is really. Do you take a test at three to six once? Do you take a test at, I, you got to go three up if you're going to do anything at all. Nece necessary. Because four to three is not good enough here. It's not going to get it done. It's not going to get it done. Nobody knows. I could just drop this internal injury, but I mean, I've got two turns left right now, or three turns left for this internal injury. I just got to get there. Go and spike resign, the ball. Right? Yeah, that's all I've got to do. That is correct. 
Well, we gotta give ourselves the best shot here, don't we? Let's do, let's try to move. And uh, let's drop in a miss and a shortcut for plus two. Uh huh. So I'll go to six brain to a three brain test. You gotta believe in the, the game sometimes, don't you? So you're head by three? Head by three. Oof. Rod is a fast action. I just don't have it in play. Now, you know. You get plus two extra. I think you play the rod. You get an extra action. That's exactly right. You yeah, gotta yeah, play yeah. the rod. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the extra action. You're art. You're using the action to play it, so it doesn't yield you an action. But you can take an extra action at plus two. I can dump those two cards in and get a plus five. Five is the money. Ace of rods, baby. <laughs> you gotta know when to hold rods. them. Old gambling Norman has been <laughs> made for like this moment. <laughs> the ace of spades. <laughs> Tony Hawk days. 100%. <laughs> All right, first action, Ace of Rods. Uh, throw this out. Wait, is it? You said it's a fast action? It's not a fast action. Okay. First action. Uh, I'm going to discard Ace of Rods using its fast action to take an extra action at plus two. I'm going to pump it by two. So that's going to be plus four to my four, eight to three. And do you know what this is right now? I should. Would you know that before? I would. Yes, and I'm doing. I can't play it off the top though, because I've already done that this turn. All right, so let's think about this. We play this mm -hmm. first action. Hey, so We could do second action, draw premonition, play premonition, hit Ace of Rods, third action move, knowing that it's going to be successful. Fourth action, Star Seeker, miss into the spheres. Spheres hits me for one and one. The next round, boom. First boom. action, evade, move. Second action, move, get out of town. I like it. It's a guaranteed route. Now, a five is, all, all, is guaranteed except for one token. There's only one token. <laughs> so here's the other thing there's only one token, right? Actually, if you just fail it, then you can draw and do the premonition route. But I would be I would be failing it when I have essentially all five cards invested, because like if I if I play this premonition and see that it's a tentacle, mm -hmm. I take the test and just waste my time, because then I know that next round, you know that I will I'll do the Ace of Rods and bump it situation. But you had to do the Ace of Rods anyway. You're doing the Ace of Rods this round. It got played to reveal that card. Well, I'm doing the Ace. I have to discard it from play to do its ability. Uh... Yeah. It's a, it's my ace up my sleeve there. Yeah, I like that. A I'm lot. a I'm a guy that likes safe things. I thought you were uh, Storm and Norman. Now the other the thing, old... dude, I could just go to the other endless bridge instead of the conglomeration bridge. That's right. Okay, so second action, I'm drawing. Crack the case. <laughs> this is the time for it. It's premonition. We're gonna crack this case wide open. Yeah. I'm feeling a superstar. Minus one. Beautiful. Okay, so that means that all I need to do is just crack the Ace of Rods. I can hold on to both of my cards, and I get to play a shortcut now, which is absolutely incredible. So minus one is happening. The Ace of Spades. I can, can I even just get there? So let me think about this. So I've taken two actions. Play Ace of Rods off the top, draw a card. Then if I crack the Ace of Rods... That's an extra action. Shortcut, automatic success. Still have two actions remaining. Miss, one action remaining. Move. Move, last action. And then I'm one away. Or I could just miss, or just move as my third action automatically succeed, or I get shortcut as my fast action, then evade with miss, end up here, still have the plus two four actions in my back pocket. I like that. That seems better, right? Yeah. Because who knows what's the end of this side of this tear through time. All right, so fast action premonition, fast action shortcut, 
Testing a four to a three. It's going to be a minus one. <laughs> That's a pass. <laughs> Slam dunkers. <laughs> That's that old Space Jam half court dunk. Yithian Star Seeker here. Third action miss. Seven to a five. He's bigger than I remember. <laughs> this changes everything. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's the rods, yeah. yeah I think you get up rods. by four. I think it's and right. And you get an extra that's, action, so that's fine. I think that's right. Ah! Okay. And I can take that extra action whenever I want, I assume, right? Yeah. All right, so third action, or fast action, Ace of Rods. You're, you're here, right? Well, I'm going to do it differently. So third action, I'm going to go here. I've got one extra action. So I'll, then I'll shortcut afterwards. Mm. It, it doesn't matter. It's the same, same difference. Um, so I'm at plus two with the miss, and I've got one action remaining. So five, two, eight, nine, ten. Success, but I will take an attack. Some cards, baby. Um, it's the end of days. The end of days. So let's kill Armitage because I just can't take any more physical damage. And I'll discard five. I can take four. one on Armitage. Yeah. So discard four, two, three. Oh my gosh. Good. Time warp on top. And you uh, succeed. And I succeed. So we'll go here. Now, okay. worth knowing, before you spend your extra action, the conglomerate is a hunter. Mm -hmm. So if you're here, he's going to come get you. But if you're here, he can move here. That's worthwhile. So let's see. Let's track this down. We started at Realms Beyond. First action was play Ace of Rods. Second action was draw Permanition. Fast action, play Permanition. Fast action, use Ace of Rods. So going up to two actions now. Two actions remaining. Third action was move here. Mm -hmm. Fourth action was evade Yithian Starseeker with miss and the plus two. Move here. And I can take a fast action to shortcut to the dimensional doorway if I so choose. I feel like you may as well do that next round. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't have to deal with him. Yeah. He's he's hunting to me, right? So will he come here? He can't go there. He can't go there. He has to go here or here first. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then I take one for the internal injury. I'm holding on. Norman's bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> holding on to uh, my shortcut. And then we go to the enemy phase. All right. Hunter's going to hunt. Is he ready first? Nope. All right, hunt. And he this bridge just on a <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, the bridge is coming to get you. Uh, draw the token. Yeah, I discard a card from hand. That's true. I have a job. <laughs> I'm useful. Maybe what they say uh, about old people is true. <laughs> Norman. Discard a card from hand. Miss effects. Drawing the token. Yep, got you. All right, card and resource, buddy. Uh, and then miss... Or conglomeration tries to hunt, but it can, right? It yeah, can, it can hunt here. Yeah. No, it can't go there. It has to go to the bacon or the stop sign. Can dimensional doorway go here? Oh, look, this connects to here as well. So he, you actually can send him through a tear in space. So he can either go here to or here. He can go or here, here to here. To here. Yep. <laughs> Who's laughing now? Send him right through the tear. And then. <laughs> If this gets discarded, what happens to him? I think this says, unengaged enemy at that location goes to here. Great. So then this will discard the end of the round, he'll bounce there. Yeah, beautiful. Same song, different verse. All right, so enemies do their stuff. Yeah. I took the one damage. I draw a card. Mm, this is resource. when you get that sweet weakness. Oh, of course it is. What's it do? Ties fail. Oh, yes. Give me the drama. <laughs> but might never matter on top. All right. Uh, Dumon? Dumon, yep. This is for you. Yeah. Let me make sure everyone's cool with what's going on here. Oh, discard a card from hand. It isn't random. It it would have been missed anyway. So we're good there. 
Okay, and so then the sphere, just to clarify, the sphere couldn't go to another dimension. Yeah, but it could go to the tear through space. Tear through space connected to me, so that's a two location difference. Dimensional doorway to endless bridge is a two location difference. We send it here, then at the end of the round, this goes away and everything goes here whenever it goes away per the text here. Yep. So now we're good. All right. Kay. Here's the bad card. Wormhole. Discard cards until a location is discarded. Resolve its ability and move to it. Uh-oh. Not good. Never Not know. good. Where's my uh, ward of protection? Just run out of the deck. What happens when the deck is we, we did We cancel the search. Let's see. OK. Ah, tear through space. That's fine. That's not terrible. It's this one, so you can go there. That's super fortunate. Oh my gosh! And then you. How can fortunate is that? Uh, did it say put it into play, resolve its revelation effect, did it, and then move to that location? It's great. It's yeah. not a problem at all. All right. <laughs> Got him. Who's laughing now, Arkham? Who's laughing now? <laughs> And then what does the agenda say? After you move to a location by an encounter card, take a horror. Yep. All what right. What do you think happens when I go to tier three time? What's your personal ghostly opinion? What do you, like, theme-wise? No, Yoki, do you think it's going to cause me to do weird stuff where I need to deal with... Oh, this thing. Yeah. I mean, you may as well find out. <laughs> well, I have no choice but to find out, yeah. I say... Okay, so... My theme... I, okay, so the flavor text, it's another world that says, what is, what was, what never will be. You see it all, and it sees you. That's fine, right? All right, shortcut. We found a shortcut. It's a tear through space. Beef. First action. Mm -hmm. And then after I leave, place a doom or discard it. You have another bridge? Yeah, discard it. I like it. And then second action. Actually, read it to me. Like the parents I never got to read to me as a kid. Just kidding, my parents were phenomenal Two shroud, readers. Four clues. Well, why does that matter? It's not the end of the game? Action. Spin two clues. Resign. You find a new path and hope that it leads back to something. Two per investigator? No, it just has two. Just two clues. To do this, every investigator has to spend two. Like to resign, you have to spend two. Okay. So I'm out. So I just need to get two clues and get on out of here. You have one action left. All right, my fingerprint kit is empty. <sighs> oh, yeah, this is gone. No, the other one went away. Well,. But this was, remember when I took the other route? I also left it because I left it from the encounter card. Mm. So it's gone. Somehow it feels safer. Carl Meisner says, what sleeves are you guys using for player cards? I want to try webcam with my Arkham with some friends this weekend, but I don't want to have too much glare. We're using uh, katanas. I think a lot of the glare has to do with the lighting that you're using, actually, because the reflection is going to be based on the lights. So we actually have the like room overhead lights off, and then we just have our studio lights on. And the positioning of that is very particular to make the camera angle not reflect the light as much as possible. We also don't sleeve the encounter cards. Uh, this internal injury in 13th Vision is a real bummer. We well, have time. I do have time. And have space. Time. Well, I think I'm just going to try to get a clue. Yep. And then uh, hope that nothing does a lot of damage to me. I will have two health floating. This doesn't even exhaust. Or I could play it safer and play Francis Morgan and give myself a four health buffer. I would do that. You think so? I mean, you can't resign this round. So next round, the odds of you getting two clues is pretty decent. Yeah. Especially. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But, you know, mm. you're, you're old Storm and Norman. Storm and Norman knows best. CT saying, so go no sleeves when filming? Uh, we, have, we have player card sleeves. Like, you can look where there's reflections. We have it set up where it's like up in this corner that we 
typically don't play right, but when it's flat, just doing a cruise around the board. But it's all about where the lights are. Uh, I'm gonna play Morgan. Yeah. You said you're a man that likes to take <laughs> I safe. I bets. like to play it safe. All right, uh, direct damage. One away. Okay. That internal injury really, uh, really gets you going. I mean, uh, you're, you're bleeding. Any enemies can they can't through, right? hunt anywhere. Uh, there's no possible path to me. They can go here. But there's no stairway. Yeah, the stairs are gone, man. Is there any bacon connections? Now, if I get tossed into a location away, maybe I should have put a doom on that instead. That's that's better. All right, that's better, right? Uh, you're just leaving the stairway open for the conglomeration. That's fine. I'm gonna be I'll, I'll be dead soon anyway. I'm with it. Okay, so then I'll draw a card. Ooh, stargazing, how fitting would that be? The stars are bright, deep in the heart of Texas. Okay, so then one money, all of this is done. One doom on the agenda. Bad card, please. Hit me. Unstable vortex. Put it into play and discard a copy of Tear Through Space. At the end of the turn, if you're at Unstable Vortex, you must either discard it or do some other stuff. Uh, can I give that to you to let you find a, find a path? It's the equal sign. Connects here and here. Uh, it doesn't connect back, but it does connect to the tear, which I assume is going away. Yeah, it has um, to, actually, yeah. It also connects to the, the moon door. So now there's a path to you, by the way. Okay. But there's two paths. All right, here we go. <clears throat> well, I don't like this uh, 13th vision. So first action, let's try to get a clue. Six to two. If you pass them both, you're out of here. I know. One down. Milan making me bucks. Old big bucks Milan. I always said. Second action. Uh, how many head by? Head by four. There's a lot of tokens in there that would fail this. No, there's not. All the fives. Not a single one. Skulls. The gas masks. Tablets. Tablets fine, actually. You know what? Now, here's the, so here's the other thing. Is it an action to get out of here? It is. Oh, it's an action, so I can't even do that. I was going to say I should draw Stargazing and then pitch a wild to go five up. I'm still failing on ties. Ooh, maybe you should wait. You can just get it next turn. you good. I believe you're going to get that superstar to finish it. this thing I'm out. I'm going to get it. That's a minus one. Minus one. He oh gets the clue. Bobby Hillo. He's got the Dillo. The Dillo. What are you going to do now? I'm going to time warp. Let's reverse that action. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so my plan was, if I failed that test, I time warp, spend two to get rid of internal injury so I don't take the fatal damage, and then buy myself another turn. Mm. Let's do it, man. Let's resign. Resign. You find a new path and hope that it leads back to safety. Read the book. Give me the book. Is it done? To the book. Oh, this. Oh, yeah. You discover a path that looks somewhat familiar and follow it. Even though your task is complete, you now understand that in closing the tear, you may never make it home. And you had to leave your friend Zoe in the eternal uh, depths. Just because it went insane doesn't mean you left me. That's right. I, I have a feeling I'll see her again. The fear of being lost here forever spurs you onward through an archway leading into an overgrown corridor. A damp wooden door leads you out into a pocket of thin rain and dark sky. Cement turns to gravel, then marble, then steel, then grass. You cross impossibly long meadows and make your way through dense woods before fatigue finally sets in. Drained of all energy, you cannot go on any further. Your body gives out due to your internal injury. Did I say that? R1. No, it did not. <laughs> Impressive. But I'll... it did say the, in the body <laughs> gives way. Ben says, Zoe met God. Bucket list complete. I, yeah, man. I, you're still tumbling with Yogg to this day, I think. You're actually the <laughs> Some Zoe say the Zoe's here. still tumbling. <laughs> All right. Well, we shot Norman through the portal. We got the job done. R1, go to page 122. 
Okay. Look at this, beautiful. Uh, one, two, one, two. Lying on your back in a patch of wet grass, you find yourself staring longingly at the night sky. Somehow you are once again atop Sentinel Hill, unable to recall exactly how you got here. You're mesmerized by the night sky. Seconds become minutes, and minutes become hours. Eventually you're found and lifted to your feet by a group of Dunwich citizens. What happened? What are you doing here? They ask you, frightened but curious. I like that. Uh. <laughs> you can't seem to find the right words to describe the events that occurred beyond the gate, if they ever truly occurred. There doesn't appear to be any trace of Seth Bishop, of the creatures you fought earlier, or of the phantasmal and otherworldly gate. But every time you sleep, you dream. And when you dream, it all comes rushing back. In your campaign log, record that the investigators closed the tear in reality. Each investigator suffers two physical trauma and two mental trauma as he or she never fully recovers from his or her time spent outside the realm of reality. Each investigator earns equal victory equal to the display. None. There is no victory here. Each investigator earns five bonus as he or she saved the world from being torn apart. The investigators win the campaign. We did it. Miraculously. That was crazy. I thought once I was gone, it was going to get fishy. The, you know, the crazy thing about this one, it could have gone so... You see the lines where it could go impossibly bad for you. Sometimes you just can't get to where you need to go. And you just got to sit there ditching locations and yeah. hanging out with Yogg until you... Well, and it's like, so you, had, you didn't have mists yet when I happened to flip a tear that let me in. And that let me come here and soak both enemies. And like that tear was insane. We, we there was a bunch of really fortunate tears. Yeah. Um, speaking of, why don't we have you read uh, what happened? Oh, epilogue. To you? Yeah. I have, I became one with the force. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If no resolution was reached, go to page one twenty four. Were we at Act Four whenever you got tabled? Table. Yes. I think we were, right? We had just gotten to the edge of the universe was revealed, or the tear through time was I revealed. Think, I think so. Maybe not. I may have been three. 124. David says, Zoe survived some unbelievable situations. I refuse to believe it. Read that. Read that thing. The whole page? Yeah, the one on the left there. This is this is your resolution, we could say. Mm. So you, you get out and there, you, you had the resolution you just read, and then I get this. I think so. Were we on Act 4 whenever all investigators were defeated? Daniel says, don't read that. Why wouldn't we read that? It's another ending, technically. I think it's fine. If you don't want to hear it, you know. I'm doing it. Several of the villagers from Dunwich heard the ruckus on Sentinel Hill and went to investigate. What they found there answered none of their questions. What do you think happened? <laughs> a frightened Curtis Whaley asked as they examined. <laughs> Who said you shouldn't read that? This is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> the hilltop. Uh, the oh, wait, all, oh, wait, hold on. That's not it. All the investigators were defeated. Okay. Oh, on. my Everybody. goodness. I was really trying to go for it. I did a pretty good country accent. It was great. It was great. It was great. Uh... Also, everyone's saying that I became Zoe the White because I'm the one that went down fighting the conglomerate of spheres into the pits of time and space. 120. Okay. Where are you here? Oh, here it is. 120. All right. Okay. And then you die. <laughs> That's not as fun. Uh, where did you come from? Where did you go? <laughs> Why are you here? Are you dreaming? Or is this place real? Now that you think about it, haven't you been here before? Or perhaps you've been here all along. Now you remember this is your real home. The path you now walk is but one ledge, with many more below. You only have to fall and you will be where you belong. One more step. Each defeated investigator is killed. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think Zoe will find her way, personally. Hey, some, no great tale is without tragedy. That's right. It was the great sacrifice because you literally firemen carried me through about seven of those scenarios. <laughs> I mean, it's cool because like I and then we got to time and space, and it's like, is it a surprise that the astronomer Nor Norman Withers was like was, the one that was could, ready to go could take the ball to the end zone? Yeah, he just didn't, uh, you know, look after his friend. I <laughs> uh, no, but really, like multiple times, even here, right? It's like I ran to the like early. You got the dog, 
Yeah. And it's like, I just run to it and take it and deal with it. But that's my role. Like and then the, the mob showed up. What was that's that That's right. About? I had to pay off the mob. Hey. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you're late on payment. That's right. We're in another dimension. Can you let it go? How is this possible? Epilogue, though. What is that? What is the epilogue? Um, I didn't see an epilogue. It said the end, didn't it? Let's just go to the back and walk it. Oh. Epilogue. The, the part that says epilogue. Yeah, hit me. Gene knelt close to the ground. Closer to Excuse the ground. Excuse me? Gene? <laughs> oh. Gene knelt closer to the ground. Gene knelt closer to the ground. What do you okay. think I said? Gene <laughs> nut? Gene knelt closer like to the French. ground to examine the sign in the dirt. The shape of the sign was foreign to her, and the tracks that had led to it were unlike any she'd ever seen. Coupled with the report from the university, she wasn't sure what to think. Miss, <laughs> Miss Beauregard, her assistant, called out to her. Have you found something? Jean stood and turned to face the freshman who'd been assigned to her. He was a good kid and a bit callow, but a hard worker and eager to prove himself. This place was supposed to be cor cordon cordoned off. Jean yeah, cor cordoned, I think. Cordoned That's off, weird. Jean yeah. responded. Yeah. Uh, Nobody has lived here for months, and yet, see for yourself. Their primitive rights continue to this day. Nice. The student approached and joined Jean in examining the sign, flipping through the pages of his journal to reference its symbols. What do you think it means, he asked. She shook her head. Outsiders rarely travel to Dunwich, and all the signposts leading to the village have been taken down. But these days, even the townsfolk who had called this place home had abandoned it. I don't know, Jean admitted, but somebody is here, and this isn't the first time we've seen like this. Stories say there's an altar where the townsfolk would conduct pagan rituals atop the hill. Maybe we'll find more up there. The end. Very cool. Is there multiple epilogues? Oh, there is. Wait, how do we determine which one to get? Does the book tell us? No. It's like a billion epilogues? Wrong epilogue. <laughs> <coughs> epilogue two. <laughs> Six months had passed, and life for Curtis Waitley, this sounds like it makes more sense, <laughs> was finally returning to normal. Since they had hushed up the incident and the authorities kept their distance from these parts, Miss Osborne had auctioned off the Eric's and Bishop family's belongings. Joe took a few trinkets for himself, of course, but Curtis wanted nothing to do with it. Folk already didn't trust him on account of his family's sins, even though he'd been attending church on the regular and had stayed far away from anything resembling the arcane. Even so, Curtis could not shake a sense of foreboding. He'd seen the devastation that befell the Eric's, Bishop's, and Fry homes. He'd even seen firsthand the creature the folks from Arkham had banished. Some days his thoughts led, to, led him to Wilbur Waitley's farm, where he would stand outside and stare for hours, too scared to enter, but too curious to leave. <laughs> Maybe there was something in there that could make this terrible, these terrible visions depart. Something that could give him strength enough to resist the night time. Curtis decided he would find it. Oof. Kind of a golem situation showing up there, huh? You know what's funny? That quantum flux card that I put in there, because somebody on chat said, yeah, you should put a copy in there. for." And I was like, well, that makes sense, because Norm's going to go through his deck pretty quick, and then it'd be nice to get a reshuffle, especially if like you have a card on top that's not very good, you can reshuffle in. I played that, I think, zero times during this campaign, except for this scenario. And if that card doesn't get played, I 100% lose. I take 10 damage. <laughs> like, I, I, I ended at one left, yeah. one health left. Which is one of those, like... There's so many fortunate things. You've got... You thread the needle in this game, like, crazy. Yeah, and I, I do think that, like, anytime you're threading the needle and it's, like, if you just don't happen to have a specific card in your deck... That that's pretty rough. That is rough. Like if you didn't know any better, because that's what got me several times. Mm -hmm. Was like having to avoid taking those cards. I, w I the only change I would make to Beyond the Veil would be something weird like um, during your draw card step, you can choose not to draw any cards or something. Where it's like, oh, it's really bad. But like if you're at near the end of your deck, like you can just stop. And not have to you go. Yeah, the game would have to do it. Or, you know, like some way of getting rid of it. I just, I, that's the only thing that I noticed in this one that I felt was a little off. Because without like Mystic having Quantum Flux, it's just like you're just watching yourself slowly lose. And there's only so fast you can go on these things. Yeah. But man, what a, but that was it, a, that was a pretty trippy one. It, it's also what makes the Yog threatening, right? Is like, it's what makes you half the pressure yeah because like if, if there was a way to get rid of it then yogg's not nearly as scary do i just have a, a unreasonable hatred for mill decks probably do you as well i i would be way more comfortable if it wasn't 10. yeah well 10 is 10 the the kind of number you live for you know that's a lot that's the that's the arkham number 
<laughs> That's it. Is one thing where like if I was bringing a new player through this campaign, I think that if they just got knocked out by that, it wouldn't feel like it would feel very. It's like the Yithian thing; it just wouldn't yeah. feel very good. But you know, for some people, the answer to that is, "Hey, welcome to Arkham." You just got rocked just because got it's ancient demons and they're crazy. Well, there were a, there was a scenario too where if we had done a little worse, we would have just lost, right? Oh, I guess this is game. The, the the dramatic amount. I think the difference is like for Essex County, it felt fair for us to lose. It was like okay, it's a train. We know the score. We know we got to move fast, and there's a lot of challenges ahead, and there's locked doors, and we kind of understand what's in front of us. But if a card, you know, randomly flipped up that said like discard six tracks from the six cars from the train, and if you're on one of them, you know, you're dead, that would be like, well, it just seems like a random way to lose rather than like a known way to lose. Because it was one of the campaigns you got Beyond the Veil right when you had like three cards left in your deck, and it was like, oh, I didn't even know this card existed, and now it's like never ah. seen it, yeah. But uh, what do you think, man? Let's talk about Dunwich Legacy. Well, Keen's saying, apparently, there's more cards these days in all the classes that can counter that card specifically. I also wonder, like, this was obviously the first campaign they made out after the core set. Yeah, it was. So yeah. I assume they were designing this before the game even came out, right? It's mm -hmm. that classic thing. So, like, the reality that this was the first thing they designed is pretty impressive, just what they're exploring and, like... Again, like traveling through, it felt like we were in this like interdimensional series of portals. Yeah, I liked this a lot. I, I feel like there was a lot of enemies that we didn't draw that I kept seeing getting discarded that would have really rocked our world. But otherwise, it just felt, um, it just was confusing the whole time. Like it wasn't like there was, a, even Yogg over here didn't feel like particularly like, ooh, scary, terrifying. It was more like, that's a minor inconvenience. <laughs> and then I'm going to get back to the weird star map for trying those to figure out flies. where I'm supposed to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you yeah. didn't even ever hit y'all. Yeah. No, and that, that, that's what's weird about, not weird, it's what's cool about this f finale because we've done Forgotten Age and we've done uh, Carcosa. And I feel like uh, Carcosa was epic in its finale for its big, crazy fight reasons, right? It was a big mm -hmm. uh, tango at the end. This was a different kind of pressure. It was not an active threat. Mm -hmm. It was a passive threat. I think that's cool. It's a very cool way to do it. It fit also the uh, the Cthulian, the Lovecraftian thing, which I think is at the root of a lot of these stories, is that there's nothing you can do. It's, it's too big and it's too weird and it's too scary to even think that you could ever succeed. So you're just kind of like wading through water that is like, I have, I'm so out of my depth, I'm so out of my league as a human being, you know, moving through literally time and space, that like if I can just get back to my own reality, it will be like the greatest victory ever. And the thought of not, like the likelihood of not getting back is very high, right? Yeah. It's exceedingly high, so it should feel, and it did, like threading that right at the very end, getting through that tear at the last second, felt very much like, oh my gosh, I was one turn away from losing and being stuck in this place. And it's a, it's a cool tension that that creates. It's very different than Carcosa. And, and Carcosa was more, um, well, Forgotten Age was very visceral, uh, leaving out kind of the Yithian reality. Forgotten Age felt, to me, I mean, let's just go through them. So Domitch Legacy is very, very classic uh, Lovecraft Cthulhu stuff to it, me. It also had some of my bar none favorite Scenarios. It didn't get better than Essex County for us on on that. I think Essex was great. Even that the museum was, so was good. cool. Yeah, museum was good. Um, yeah. There was another one after Ex Essex though that was also like we had a couple. And Essex was particularly good for us. Like the way it went was crazy, unbelievable. Uh, but I feel like there was another one like a week or two later that felt similarly like. There was one where we were like ring around the rosy type thing, going to the different locations, Sentinel mm -hmm. Hill and up and down and whatnot. There was the one where we had to climb up the yeah. the hill with the stuff. On it's the definitely side. cool, right? Like yeah. if, if this is the first and it was for many people campaign that you play after the core set, I feel like it's it's definitely enough to keep you interested. Mm -hmm. And then after this, they went to Carcosa, and that that that's probably where everybody became forever lifelong Arkham fans. I think the whole like name that shall not be named. Uh, reality of that campaign is like yeah this this was really cool because i feel like they were exploring a lot of different mechanical things and like ways of executing that you they haven't done before right and then carcosa was cool because it literally thematically felt so accurate like it sunk right in didn't it is what i'm seeing real yeah and like he's in my head and he's always here and like it's this like weird looming yellow king the whole bit right yeah uh starting from the the theater all the way to the end 
that was a good that was a good campaign. Yeah, and then the climax of that campaign was was exceedingly epic. And it climaxed like straight up, right up. Yeah, it was like <laughs> insane. It was exponential, straight up. Um, yeah. And then you had Forgotten Age, and Forgotten Age in in the context of these first two is like exactly right. <laughs> On like with a theme, I you know some yeah. of the execution you can argue about that. It's actually now it's funny. It's kind of like uh, it's a cult classic now in a lot of ways because when it first released, it was like uh, I don't know this is and I was on that boat too. And now it's like one of the more loved, if not one of the most loved, uh, cycles as people have worked through it and kind of understand it. I could definitely see it being the one I would repeat more. Yeah, and like as, interesting, as yeah. the third cycle, so it was Dunwich Carcosa that. I feel like Dunwich and Carcosa, I would be less interested in like starting over in the middle. Yeah. But like, if the third time we're playing <laughs> is Forgotten Age, the third campaign, and you just get wrecked by it. Yeah. I feel like I would be more encouraged at that point to try it. Like at that, anyone that is that far just into Arkham, it's like they're just looking for an experience they can keep playing. And so like, Losing is actually okay to people that have been playing for a year and a half. Forgotten Age is kind of the treadmill of the game, isn't it? It's yeah. just kind of where you like put yourself through your paces yeah. and just see if you can get through. And then what was after Forgotten Age? Circle is it undone. Circle? Yeah, we're about to the go next, to Circle. The next train stop? Circle Undone, which is uh, like Silver Twilight Lodge, Witchcraft, um, that whole kind of game, kind of some ghost stuff, spectral stuff. That's why the board looks like it does. Um, and then you have Dream, Dream Eater, which is like... Crazy. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know. It's you where the tarot done. cards are. It's where, not where the tarot cards, it's where the, the cats come Circle from. Circle Undone's where tarot cards are. The right. interdimensional cats, and it's a totally like, it reminds me of Planescape with D&D, which is not a reference that you really appreciate. But it's kind of where everything becomes very strange. That's at least my impression of it. Where it's like, let's toss out all of the structure of like human reality and dive in. And then we go to Innsmouth, which it, to me, you know, if you look at it, Circle Undone, actually, this, is, this may be the case. So Circle Undone, Dream, uh, Innsmouth might be the same as Dunwich, Carcosa, Forgotten Age. Mm. Where like the third in the series becomes the most concrete. Because that's where like there are fish people and the, the town is flooding. And you gotta you gotta get out of it, and it's like it's very real. It's not a whole lot of like you know there might be a big tentacle monster and kind of thing, but it's not like it's as not, far as I understand it's not psychological. It, we're not going to like giant cosmic weird stuff. Yeah, the yeah. metaphysics aren't as as obvious, but with this one it was like, you know, it was like classic, and then it was super creepy, and then it was very tangible, and I think Circle Undone might be a little more like classic witch stuff, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then Dream Eater is like weird and tangible, creepy, insane. And then we go to something a lot more tangible, which is uh, Innsmouth. So that's interesting. Maybe maybe that's an idea. Maybe I would be curious like on purpose to know if there's like a cyclical uh, design space like that being explored. Yeah, Chris, and here Dream Eaters is like Lovecraft does Wizard of Oz. So that I mean that sounds awesome, right? That is crazy. I would be very interested in that. Uh, man, hey, thanks uh, thanks for joining us, guys. How how how's everything for everybody out there? You guys doing all right? Everybody doing okay out there? Also, for a little sneak peek, so we're off next week, no stream. We're off Friday of this week and then all of next yep. week. Yeah, and then the week after, we're coming back uh, to start a new campaign. But the thing I'm really excited about is I got my investigator decks in. The That's starters. right, you did. You got so the old sub. I think the plan is we're going to pick investigators. We're yep. going to probably look through all those, see who we want to play, who makes a good team, pick a team, and then dive into Circle Undone. That's right. Uh, as the next campaign, which I'm, I'm excited about. Now, I the other cool thing about this, with the Investigator decks coming out, is that now that we have some archetypes established, like Zoe, No Test Zoe, and Jim Diamond, and uh, who's the other one that you really like? Well, it's Joe Diamond and... Joe Diamond and Jim Culver. Jim Culver. Jim Culver and Joe... No, it was no, Joe and J Mandy. Joe Diamond. You were Jim Culver playing the trumpet. Yes. I was uh, Tony Morgan. You Tony were Tony Zeros. Morgan. Tony Zeros. That was a good one. Tony Zeros and Jim? Was that the... No, it was Tony Zeros and Mandy. Mm -hmm. And then it was Jim and, and Joe. Joe. Yeah. And then it was Norman and Zoe. And Norman and Zoe. It's beautiful. Yeah. And then next will be Dharma and Greg. That's right. Um, so you can actually look. There's a ton of cards in those investigator starters. Unreal amounts. And I already saw like two or three cards that would be phenomenal in that Jim Culver deck. Yeah, I'm excited to get to so the, good. the point where we do go back yeah. to characters and either take them through a different campaign or just totally build them differently because 
there's a bunch of new cards that have been yeah, coming out. Yeah, because you can. When I was playing Tony Morgan, you built the deck, and also we were playing with a limited $200 budget. Mm -hmm. So, like, not only do we have the rest of the cards, but we have way more cards coming out. Yeah, you could really realize yeah. that, that archetype. But it's tough. I would be curious, everyone out there that's watching that plays, are you more prone to use the same investigator and try new mm. things or try new investigators? Because like That's a good question. There's yeah. a ton of investigators out there that I haven't played, and we're getting five more in the starters, and then we're getting, I think, five more in the Innsmouth expansion, which is out in the next month or the like next couple months. Yeah. So like that's, that's ten new, lot. and I haven't even played many of them already. Uh, so I'm I'm curious what people do. I love I love the idea that you just can't you can't really catch up. There's just too much new. Well, at this point, I assume if I had been playing from if we've been playing from the beginning, and like playing regularly, yeah. you yeah. you we would have burned through these campaigns over and over with all these different investigators. Probably, but you'd have to burn through a new campaign three times to fully explore. If it was the two of us. Because it'd be like, we'd use two of the new ones, and then we'd finish that campaign, mm -hmm. and we'd use two of the new ones, then we'd finish that campaign again, and then one of us would get another one of the new ones. Well, even if you pair off the, novellas, the odd one with the odd one from the next campaign. Mm -hmm. So you really have to go through each campaign twice yeah, with the investigators presented to you from that to have played them all. And I think that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, like, that's it, totally reasonable. If these packs are coming out once a month, and like we were playing even every couple weeks, we would... Because like, also, when it's just the deluxe... Mm -hmm. And then one pack, like you make it to the end of that. Yeah, that's true. And you can just restart and. So then you keep your campaign log and have that deck, and then yeah. you start the other one over. Yeah. So I actually assume a new campaign comes out. I'm curious. Does this have a everyone out there does it? I think the two ways I would be to. I've never been caught up to this game, so that's going to be a wild thing once we finally get to that point. But I assume there's people that are caught up. They have their one deck and their one group, and the pack comes out, and sometime that month they play that game. Then there's people that play every week. Like I know Chris plays locally every week. Yeah. So like, what a what a blessing that's, that is. That's a lot of sessions to be able to yeah. do. Um, and so, I, I assume you explore all the investigators. You get to the end of the campaign and you start over with a different set of investigators. But then by the time Pack Four comes out, like, do you have two or three groups that are ready to play Stage Four? So what I what we were doing. See, before we did the stream, I was getting to play once a month, and we would play after a new pack had come out, basically. So a new Mythos pack drops, we schedule a date, we get together, we play that scenario, and then next month, you know, wait for next month. And for us, we were behind, so new pack would come out and we'd play like two scenarios. New pack would come out, we'd play like two scenarios. So by, about the time that that current campaign was going to end would be about the time the last pack for it would release, right? Yeah. Um, so if you're catching up, you have so much content to work through that it's really no pressure. But I was going to play once a month, maybe once every month and a half. And so going from that to playing every week. <laughs> That's four times, so four or much, five times as so much, You get so much better at Arkham 2. You're so much more aware of the cards and the way the game functions. Yeah. And you can I actually mean, kind of internalize the That's game. how card games go, right? Yeah. Like, I think that's, uh, you just have to get in there. And like, because I still in my brain think I'm pretty new at Arkham. But yeah. like, we've now done, I guess, three full campaigns. So that's probably like, 25, 8, 16, 24. What are all those numbers? Eight scenarios per per campaign. Yeah, like 20 total scenarios? 25. Was, it's 24 plus the core set, so 27 plus Excelsior, 28 plus Consternation, 29. So about 30. So that that's cool, though. Like, 30 scenarios seems like nothing. Yeah, but that is like 150 hours yeah. of playing. <laughs> which is great. And all the deck building sessions, which has uh, been great. Talking here about uh, whether you bring new investigators or not, uh, Chris Odovic saying uh, both. Uh, Seeker is mobile, new investigators most of the time. CD saying, I've created a great Silas deck that is crazy good. That's that's great. Silas can really turn some screws on this game. Um, Chris S saying both. Ian Roswell saying, try new investigators. <clears throat> Daniel Keem saying, always try new investigators. Hmm. Also saying that's half the fun for me, which is nice. Yeah. It's kind of like character creation in a role-playing game. It, it really is where you get to spin your imagination around. I mean, I think it's really, mm -hmm. if you play it like once a month, which is, I don't know how often most people normally play it, but I, if you're playing it once a month, you'll never run out of investigators. Yeah. And so like... That's a cool idea. That's pretty cool. Ben Sweeney saying, I'm trying new investigators. Then again, I consider myself new and want to try every type first, which yeah. I understand that. Uh, Chris Dooch saying, I rarely play the same ones often except for my most favorites, though I played show a ton, which is cool. I, I've liked every character I've played so far a lot. Yeah, they do a great job of just making them unique. Yeah. 
Chris Hodovec saying, I tend to stick with rogues and guardians, but I've been using Dexter as Mystic and Windy as Survivor and loving it. Again, when you branch out, you're like, oh, this is also fun. Spanner saying, I try new investigator, but sometimes go back to my stalwart favorites, which are Windy or Mind. Anesthesia Cat, I try new ones, but Diana is a regular. So it seems like you kind of have your one or two that are your standbys. And when you really just need to... Like, I would say uh, Tony Zeros is pretty high on your list of just, like, yeah. I would love to play this I again. I mean, it's hard. But... I w Jim is my number one right now. Jim Culver? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I would play that deck every yeah. day if I had to. I mean, I, wanted to. I really liked... It's hard to beat Tony Zeros just because of the experience that we... Like, it was a really... Just, like, there were a lot of notable happenings. Yeah, and we didn't know that, anything, you know? The fact that Tony Zeros is a name that came out yeah. of that is pretty good. But I also really liked the Joe Jim... Uh, the hunch deck is really cool to me. Like having hunches as yeah. a character, yeah. and it's just being randomly good. Uh, and that was the first deck I actually built. Yeah. So there's an attachment to that concept as well. Um, but I think the biggest thing, someone was, I saw someone asking the take on deck building now that we play a lot more. The most revolutionary thing for me, bar none, concepts for this game, was building a deck with 30 to 40 experience. Stephen randomly texted yeah. me one weekend. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I just build it with 30, 40 experience, and that's the upgrade. That's what I want to upgrade to. And that totally changed what I was even looking at, like, including my deck. It might make my deck a little less efficient up front because I'm including it does. cards that I wouldn't, don't necessarily want when I'm at zero experience. But I know that by the time I get to the end, it'll be a card I wished I had in, and I don't want to pay experience for it. You don't want to pay. You'll, you'll get worse every time if you do that, for yeah. sure. Uh, that totally changed the game. I think you can literally do that with anybody and probably come up with a pretty good deck. Like, Zoe is a great example. I literally was just looking at what I could spend my experience points on, and I had the concept, too, I didn't want to have to test. Yeah. Because I played two heavy testing characters. Um, and you start and looking you through succeeded. the cards. <laughs> you start looking through the cards, and it's like, oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's enough here to, to go for it, and I think you could do that. Pick an investigator. What's the thing, what's the angle you're taking on this? Mm -hmm. And then lean in. It's beautiful. Phyllis Master saying, my kids just brought me my investigator starters from my TC sub. So excited to look through them. That's awesome. That's amazing. If anybody out there doesn't know, we have a subscription service for all these Arkham products kind of broken out. So you can subscribe to the investigator starters. So if there's new ones of those, you'll just automatically get them. You can subscribe to Mythos Packs and, and Deluxe Expansions and uh, anything else. There's scenarios, novellas, anything you want from Arkham. You can just click a button and then we'll automatically send them to you. You don't have to track them down, pre-order them, etc. And now is service. a particularly good time because of two things. One, we just put more of those investigator starter subs back in, good. which it's past uh, you can't sign this up release. to get the five that just came out, but assuming they do more and assuming those do well, which I think those are two pretty good assumptions to be making. Um, you can sign up to automatically receive those, but I'm excited because I'm. This is my first time to be signed up going into a new cycle. Oh yeah, you're uh, gonna get the you're gonna get the to full treatment. Get the trickle of cards yeah. as they come. So in. a lot of these old campaigns are hard to find. So yeah. if you're new to the game, if you picked up the starters and you're here, and that's why you're here, or you have a core set or whatever, mm. that's actually a really the start of a cycle is like the best time to get in. This would be the best time to do the Mythos pack sub and the the expansion. Yeah, because you know you're gonna get that whole story. Yeah, unlike the old sets where it's like. Maybe Miskatonic Museum's out of print. You can't tell that this story. Yeah, it's tough. That's that's a good point. Keenblay Sam, my partner and I have played the campaigns so much we've played as every released character except for the new packs. Wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. Who's your favorite? Um, Elliot saying, uh, Zach, Steven, you guys need to find another pair to play through Dream Eaters with on stream. When we you definitely will. We definitely yeah. will do that. So we're going to do Circle, and then I assume we'll just go through, at that point, the order that they're in. Because like part of the problem with streaming Arkham is like spoiling stuff for people, the story. Yeah. So we could, you know, like with Champions, we're going to be streaming Rise of Red Skull, which is the campaign coming out. And we're giving it like a week uh, so that people have a chance to explore it without us spoiling it. But like spoilers are just such less of a thing there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we wanted to be careful. We, that's why I wanted to start over the Eventually older we'll campaigns. catch up. Yeah. And then and what will we do? We'll have to start at Return to uh, Carcosa. Return to Forgotten Ages at the top and of And then list. we'll go to Return to Forgotten uh, Ages, you know? I, I mean, you know, at some point, like, maybe we'll just have to be doing But like, if we were caught up, we now we still only have one scenario a month. So if we're doing four streams, then like we have all the time in the world to go back and do everything. Nothing but time. We'll eventually catch up at weekly. Can we ask a good question here? What's the opinion on building a deck and not playing it again? It's very different from other card games where you typically tune a deck by playing it multiple times. So would you ever feel that way about this? I don't think so. I don't. It's the same with like a D and D campaign or a Torchbearer campaign. It's like I tell the story of that character and then I'm okay to let it go. 
and and tell a new story, yeah. a new character. I, yeah, I think it, it just depends on what you'd have fun doing. Because, like, I could see, as an example, like, if we return to Forgotten Age, I might want to take Tony again. I was saying, return to Carcosa, I'm all in on Jim Culver. Yeah, and, number, like, number one. I think all of those decks I could potentially do better, and there's new cards coming out, too. So uh, there's a reason to explore it further, and there's something kind of cool to, like... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I would ever explore like the harder modes of the game. I, have has anyone out there played them? It, it would be so grindy, right? I mean, like, well, like, if is it more fun to fail more? It just starts to feel more random than anything else. Now you just have to play differently on hard. You got to play differently. It's all about how can I buff my test as high as possible. I mean, that's really what you've got to do. And, and you've got to, if you fail a couple of critical tests in a row, you just kind of know it's over, which is tough. Phyllis Master, it's a great comment. It's a huge pile of cards right now. You'll like this too, Zach. Mostly unspoiled for me. Nothing better than that. I've totally turned around on hunting for spoilers. I'd rather be surprised, and this now feels like Christmas. Which is cool. It's a game that actually, like, I think naturally people don't want to be spoiled on. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not what I'm used to with, like, competitive games. People are, like, hungry for spoilers. Uh, so that's where, like, I try to not look at spoilers. Like, the first article for the first Innsmouth pack went out. I saw the article went up, but I didn't read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people were talking about Covenant cards, and it's like, I kind of just want to know what that is when we get there. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, it's very cool. Obviously, it has our name in it. So yeah, like Keen saying uh, it's also, like, basically doing testless damage and clues yeah. on hard. Very important. Which makes sense. So I, I don't know if the difficulty matters as much as, like, I think Return to is great. And also just doing, making different choices. I, we, this is the exact perfect difficulty for us. Yeah. Just perfect. Well, it's every time we get down to the wire. Yeah. That's how you know. And you could, you, and we lose every once in a while, but like this is the amount that I want to lose, like one or two scenarios over a campaign, and then I want to barely win the rest of them. And so I think it's absolutely perfect for yeah. us right now. And we typically have like one that like we beat pretty well. Yeah. One or two, and then... One or two we lose, and yeah. then the rest are, like, super close. Jeffrey Smith saying, please do a Survivor next. I don't have a clear understanding how they play. I'll do that. I'll do a Survivor in Circle Undone. It's done. I don't even know who this Survivor is. What color is Survivor? Uh, red. You, you can do any Survivor. Oh, yeah. You can yeah. do any Survivor, yeah. All right, so if you're doing a Survivor, what's their stat normally good at? Uh, nothing. They're just... They're they have, like, like the uh, test again and get plus two and lucky and those mm. kinds of things. They, they play really, like, hmm. on the edge of your seat, which I really like. So you could go either direction with that. Yep. I think when we do Innsmouth, Steven's probably going to end up playing Silas. It's hard not to. He's so good, though. Chris says, got my TC shipment of five starter decks today. Been playing since release, but still so excited. It's the largest single drop of new cards ever. Keep up the great work, guys. Hey, we appreciate being a subscriber. Uh, and I'm glad it's it's only Monday, and a lot of people are saying they're getting those decks, so that was good. We had a weird delay. Yeah. Uh, very unusual, not expected to continue. Absolutely. Ashcan Pete would be super fun. Is Ashcan the one with the dog? Or is that Duke? Duke? I think that. He's with the guitar? Yeah, I think I've Ashcan. Is that Ashcan? If he's got the dog, that's really cool. I would love to do that, actually. All right, Zach. Let's get out of Let's here. Let's get out of here. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. This was an absolute pleasure. If you've been watching along throughout the Dumbwich Legacy campaign, we're just so happy that you, uh, you, you caught us for it and you uh, followed along with our epic journey of Norman Withers and Zoe going through time and space. Honestly, if you think about the flavor of the journey that we've been on and how much you've just had to kill everything in the way, and then by the time we finally get to the end, where Norman has his stargazing and he's the astronomer, you know, in his he's element. Been, you've been looking at the stars the whole time. He got he got time warps and counter spells at the very end and got real weird. And the scenario got real weird with him. And it was that that allowed him to kind of save the world in the end um, is an amazing story to tell. Uh, just fantastic. It was kind of a Frodo Sam situation, honestly. <laughs> we got to deliver Norman to the cosmos. <laughs> Just get him across um, the just line. Just get him across the line. Uh, it was fantastic. It was great hanging out with everybody and, and learning the rules better every single day, something that uh, sometimes can feel like a, a giant confusion. Um, Super but helpful to have not, chat on. It's not that hard. You just got to take the time to really understand how the system functions. And a lot of times it's just slowing down long enough to read a card. 
I've, some would, some we, would say we've that's done that a lot. But sometimes when a game's so good, it's hard. You're just trying to yeah, go. Yeah, because there's a lot of text on the board. Yeah. Well, and it also, like, it creates, I feel this way, sometimes it's like forgetting to breathe. Yeah. Or it's like you're just trying to, like, hurry up and get rid of the enemy because you feel claustrophobic, ah, and so you're yeah, not reading stop. everything. Uh, and, of course, uh, content subscribers, these are there are folks out there giving us $20 a month just to be on the air. Uh, especially during the pandemic, which is amazing. You can find that on our website if you want to uh, pitch in there. Uh, huge thanks to all of you. It, this is we, we originally got this entire overhead setup because of the content subs that poured in whenever we opened that up. Um, so it, it goes to those kinds of things, and there are more of those on the way. And then, of course, subscribers, uh, Covenant subscribers. These are, are people who are subscribed to Mythos Packs and campaign expansions and or I guess they call them deluxe expansions or campaign expansions. I think they're deluxes. Novellas, yeah. scenarios, now investigator starter decks, anybody who's subscribed to the products, that's just basically you're getting your products through us. It's happening automatically. We charge you a couple of weeks before we send those out to you. Um, you're so, so valued in our uh, ecosystem, our, our entire content and business and whatnot. Especially now, you know, because our store sh still shut down. Um, you know, we're still dealing with the effects of the pandemic. So that is a huge help to us, and it means the world to us. And we just like being able to show you what we're about on the business side of things. And then also the Cosmic product, or the, not the Cosmic, the uh, Mythos products. Um, one of our, I guess at this point, probably the longest running line that we have one of, if not the longest running well, line that we have. Technically, we still have those data tokens. Technically, the data tokens are still there. That's right. Those are the, the bad boys from 2013. I love this line of, of tokens that we've done. We've got a, a undone board that's in development right now. We're working out materials there and kind of getting that all sourced out and making sure that we can uh, we can deliver that at scale at a, in a good way. Uh, and then uh, likely more to come on that front. We've got uh, all sorts of stuff dropping in Innsmouth, and uh, we've got Dream Meter still on the horizon, and uh, a lot of good stuff to come. So thank you, anybody who is supporting us that way. I always see on social media some of the posts come in, people posting pictures and whatnot. It means the world to us. We share those in our weekly meetings. We share those um, around the office, here in the marketing room. Um, so it, it all has a huge impact. So thank you. The end of Dunwich Legacy. We made it. And uh, we're taking a week off, and then we'll come back. Circle By we, done. we mean Stephen made it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Even after a, a very epic session of feeling awful on last Friday. But you made it. You, really, you literally, right. you literally you fought to, and defeated the Balrog. It was a tear through time. Really, to become Norman it? Did the it White. Did it ever actually happen? All right, I'm going to get us out of here, Zach. Um, all right. Again, uh, Stephen said it all, but we really do appreciate all of you. Uh, it means the world to the entire team to have everyone support that's been watching and buying Bryce and subscribing. At home, Jonathan at home making the pops happen. Yeah, shout out to them. That's not an easy... Uh, that's a Balrog to slay in and of that itself. Is, yeah. We appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Uh, we won't be streaming Arkham this Friday or next week, but we'll be back after that for Circle Undone. Hopefully we'll see you there. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next time.